A girl marries a strange man for a promise, but he kicks her out on her wedding day. They she sneaked back, but her mother-in-law burned all her luggage. Rehan managed to salvage only one photo, her mother's portrait. Despite the danger, though she was heartbroken, she couldn't leave because she had made a promise to one person. Rehan grew up in a single-parent family. Her mother had died recently and Rehan was left alone in the countryside until her uncle found her. Her uncle wants Rehan to marry a son in here. Rehan refuses because she doesn't want to get married, let alone to someone she's never met. Her uncle said he had cancer and was dying. His only wish was to find a good wife for his son, and Rehan was the best candidate. Rehan was saddened to know that her uncle's days were numbered, as he had taken care of her family, to prevent her uncle from being sad and to repay this favor. Rehan took this as a promise. She vowed to be a good wife, but the first day she married Amir, her mother-in-law rejected her. Lindy despised her country daughter-in-law. Her ideal daughter-in-law would be Anna, who has a crush on Amir, because Anna's family is very powerful in the area. Lindy promised Anna that she would make her her daughter-in-law, and that would elevate Lindy's status in the rich world. Lindy obeyed her husband on the surface, but secretly she tried everything to get rid of Rayon. Lindy first ordered the maid to burn the luggage Rayon brought with her, and then made Rayon work with the maid. The maid even looks down on Rayon, who is from the countryside, and throws a plate to Rayon on purpose, causing the plate to fall on the ground and shatter. Lindy arrives at the scene. The maid immediately blamed Rayon for the accident. Lindy scolded Rayon, do you know how much this plate is worth? You'll never be able to afford this play in your life. Do you understand? Rehan was speechless with frustration. Then she told Rehan to get rid of the pieces. As the house was about to have guests, Rehan silently knelt down to pick up the pieces, while her mother-in-law kept urging her to do so. In her haste, Rehan cut her hand. Just then her fiancé comes back. Amir rushed to treat Rehan's wound. He didn't know that the poor girl was his wife. When he found out that his father wanted to marry Rehan to him, Amir got into a big fight with his father. He didn't want to get married, and would never marry a woman he didn't know. But his father said, I promise you'll fall in love with Rayhan sooner or later. you learn to grow up only when you have a family. Then he went to Rayhan and asked her why she was marrying him. It seemed to him that Rayhan was interested in his family's money. Amir, of course, couldn't let such a scheming woman get away with it. So he drove Rayhan away without her father's knowledge, and then gave Rayhan a large sum of money to send her back to her country home. Rayhan had never been so humiliated, but she chose to live up to the promise she made to her uncle. When Amir returned home satisfied, he realized that the money had been returned. Amir looked out the window and saw that the woman was really back. Amir suddenly wondered what kind of person this woman was. If she didn't want his money, why did she marry him after just one meeting? That day, Amir suddenly approached his father and told him that he was willing to marry Rayhan. His father thought that his son had finally come to his senses and said, You two will get married tomorrow. But he didn't know that all this was Amir's plan, because he wanted Rayhan to leave the family willingly. On the other hand, when Anna got to know the news, she went to Lindy and asked her what was going on. You promised to make me your daughter-in-law. Lindy didn't dare to offend Anna, but promised her that she would let Rayhan go back to the countryside, and so began a wedding with different intentions. At the wedding, the priest asks Amir if he'll take Rayhan as his wife. Lindy shakes her head, hoping her son will say no. Anna was trembling, waiting for Amir to say no. But Amir said, yes with conviction. When they heard Amir's answer, Lindy and Anna were devastated. When it was Rayhan's turn, she hesitated for a long time. She finally chose to keep her promise in Setius. The paralyzed sister and the rich man were happy and gave their blessings to the newlyweds. After the wedding, Rayhan greeted her mother-in-law, only to be met with Lindy's threats. Te lo advertí, jovencita. Lo que pase en adelante es tu responsabilidad. A woman is staying home alone on her wedding night. Her husband would rather have coffee with his friends than come home because he doesn't know his wife very well. They've only known each other for a day when his rich father forces them to get married. Even when his wife prepares him a gourmet meal, they don't say a word. Rayhan was like an outsider, embarrassed and didn't know where to put her hands. She tries so hard to be a good wife, knowing that her husband likes coffee. She makes coffee for him and brings it to him. Amir doesn't appreciate it at all and says, no matter what you do, I won't recognize you as my wife. Amir doesn't want to stay with his wife, just as he is about to leave the house. He realizes that Rayhan has prepared a suit and tie for him. Instead of getting dressed, Amir called Rayhan and warned her never to touch his clothes again. Amir always thought that Rayhan had ulterior motives for marrying him. The more Rayhan behaved like a good wife, the more he became convinced. Confused, Amir goes to the beach with his friend. He brags that he'll get his wife to file for divorce in three months. 
As they were about to leave, they were hit by a man on a bicycle. The man starts cursing and Amir beats him up without a word. Then they were taken to the police station. The man insisted on suing Amir instead of accepting money. Amir finally panicked because he didn't want his father to know about it. On the other hand, Rayhan, who was at home, got a call from the police. Rayhan arrived at the police station, apologized sincerely to the man and persuaded him to drop the charges. Amir was soon released, although he was still wondering why the man dropped the charges. Until the moment he saw Rayhan, he finally understood. When he got back, Amir asked Rayhan why he did it. Rayhan says I just did what a wife should do which makes Amir even more confused. Why was this woman so nice to him? Amir slept on the couch that night, and Rayhan thoughtfully covered him with a blanket. When Rayhan leaves, Amir suddenly wakes up because he was just pretending to be asleep. He was pretending to be asleep because the events of the night had shaken him up. The more Rayhan treats him, the more Amir rejects him, not because he hates Rayhan, but because he doesn't want to admit that his father's decision was the right one. Though he doesn't want to admit it, his opinion about Rayhan is slowly changing. He may even fall in love with Rayhan later on, on this day, her father-in-law and mother-in-law finally came back from their trip. As soon as Lindy came back, she rolled her eyes at Rayhan. This should be her warning that Rayhan's good days are over. Sure enough, Lindy took advantage of the fact that no one was home and started making trouble. She wants to kick her daughter-in-law out of the house and throw her daughter-in-law's luggage out of the house. Rayhan kept quiet and went to retrieve her luggage. She could have walked away, but then she remembered her promise to her father-in-law. And then Rayhan walked back towards the house with great determination. Lindy was incredulous and reached out to teach her daughter-in-law a lesson for not knowing her place. But Rayhan stopped her from hitting her. Then Rayhan went back to her room and locked the door. Lindy was still knocking on the door, which made her scared. She had no one to turn to. Seeing her daughter-in-law's boldness, Lindy ordered the maid to bring the spare key. The door was opened quickly. Lindy was furious and scolded. You poor daughter-in-law from the countryside still want to rebel. Get out of this house now, or I'll be very rude to you. Rayhan said, you can't do this to me, even though you don't like me. It doesn't change the fact that I am your daughter-in-law. Lindy said, I never recognize you as my daughter-in-law. Then she tried to push Rayhan, but she pushed too hard and Rayhan hit the wall and fainted. Lindy panicked because if her husband found out about this, she would be thrown out of the house. Just then Amir returns. When her son found out, Lindy acted like she didn't know anything about it. The rich man asked his daughter-in-law what was going on. Rayhan took one look at her mother-in-law and said she fell. Seeing that her daughter-in-law didn't dare to tell the truth, Lindy immediately pretended to say to her husband, Don't worry, I'll take good care of my daughter-in-law, and I won't let her get it again. After the others left, Lindy told Rayhan to leave as soon as she was healed. Otherwise this punishment would only be the beginning. Rayhan, on the other hand, says that no matter what you do to me, I won't leave because that's the promise she made to her father-in-law, who has terminal cancer. No matter what happens, she will never leave Amir. For the first time, Amir's heart aches when he sees Rayhan hurt. Knowing Rayhan's love for the sea, Amir drove her to the beach to play. Seeing Rayhan shivering, he thoughtfully turned on the heater for her. This is the first time Rayhan has felt warmth and acceptance since she came to this family. But the improvement in their relationship also gave Lindy a sense of crisis. She recalled her husband's earlier warning to her. No dejaré solo a mi hijo con esa sucia campesina. Esta es mi última advertencia. No volveré a repetirlo. Lindy's desire to get rid of Rayon grew stronger. With a twinkle in her eye, she had another evil idea. Lindy asked the maid to tell the rich man that she pushed Rayon, which the maid didn't understand. Lindy asked her to just do it. After hearing the maid's story, the tycoon was very angry and asked Lindy if she did it. Lindy said that she was wrongly accused and said to her husband, Don't you believe that poor woman and not me? The tycoon said he believed Rayhan wouldn't lie. He warned his wife that if she hurt Rayhan anymore, she would get out of the house. All this was heard by Amir outside the door. When his father leaves, Amir rushes to ask his mother what's going on. Lindy immediately said exaggeratedly, Your wife slandered me and said that I pushed her down. And she told your father about me. And now your father wants to divorce me. I'm so wronged. Amir turned around and went to Rayhan to ask for an explanation. Lindy said hypocritically, Don't go. I don't want to ruin your relationship with your wife. Amir was overcome with anger, seeing her son going to her daughter-in-law in a rage. Lindy smiled triumphantly. So this was her real purpose. She predicted that her husband would be furious if he found out that she was the one who hurt Rayhan. He would fight with her. Then she had the maid throw her son here on purpose. When Amir hears his mom suffering, he'll go after Rayhan. Lindy's demean. Amir found Rayhan and asked her why she wronged his mother. Why did she go to his father? Rayhan said that she never wronged anyone. 
and she didn't complain to anyone. But Amir didn't believe his wife at all. Rayhan's tears were falling from her eyes. Then Amir gets a call from the company. Este asunto no ha terminado. Seguiremos cuando regrese. Seeing her son leave in anger, Lindy knew her plan had worked. Then she called Anna immediately. Lindy assured Anna that soon the countrywoman would be gone, and that you were the only daughter in law in the family. By now Rayhan was crying uncontrollably. She suddenly regretted that she should never have promised her uncle to marry Amir. And Lindy's plot wasn't over yet. When she saw the maid preparing to give Rayhan her medicine, Lindy snatched the tray and threw the medicine on the ground and stomped on it. Then she took her suitcase and pretended to run away from home. When Amir returns, the maid tells him that his mother has left the house. As Lindy told her to do, Amir rushed to the phone to ask where his mother had gone. Lindy is very upset and says she is so sad that there is no more room for her in this house. Amir asked her when she would be back. Lindy said angrily, I won't go back until your wife apologizes to me. Amir asked Lindy's address and immediately drove Rayhan there. At this time, Rayhan still didn't know where Amir was taking her. Amir took Rayhan to find Lindy at a cafe. Then he told Rayhan to apologize to his mother right away. Rayhan knew that Amir would never believe her. She apologized to Lindy to save their marriage. Rayhan said, even though I apologized, I never did it. Then Rayhan left in frustration. Amir wants to take Rayhan back, but she insists on walking back on her own. And then Anna shows up at the cafe. Apparently, she was watching the whole thing from the sidelines. Lindy proudly brags to Anna about how she bullied Rayhan. Anna also said that if you really make Rayhan leave Amir, I'll introduce you to my mom, and your status in the rich world will go up. Lindy was more than happy to hear that. Amir, on the other hand, was thinking about Rayhan all the time. He felt very uncomfortable for some reason. Amir felt sorry for Rayhan, but he couldn't let his mother suffer. And Rayhan, who was alone, had been targeted by someone with bad intentions. She tries to make a call, but realizes she's forgotten her cell phone. And the two villains were following Rayhan all the way. She was scared and kept walking faster and faster. Finally, she saw an old woman in the park. So she borrowed her cell phone and called her husband's house. But when her mother-in-law realized that it was her, she told the maid to hand up the phone. In order to prevent Rayhan from calling again, Lindy even took out the battery. The housekeeper asked the maid if Rayhan was calling. With Lindy's warning look, the maid immediately said it was just a nuisance call. In fact, the housekeeper was very worried about Rayhan's safety. When Amir got home, he realized that his wife wasn't home yet, and turned around and saw her bag on the bed, which meant Rayhan hadn't brought anything with her. So he started to worry about Rayhan. The housekeeper told Amir that someone had called the house before. Maybe it was Rayhan. Amir immediately called and found out that it was his wife. After asking for her address, he drove to her destination. But there was a traffic jam on the way, and the grandmother had already left. Rayhan had to wait for Amir to pick her up. A couple greeted Rayhan warmly. The woman kindly offered Rayhan a cup of hot tea, but Rayhan was very wary, so she politely declined. The woman didn't force her to drink the tea, but chatted with her about her family. As they chatted, Rayhan's guard was slowly lowered. Then the woman poured Rayhan another cup of tea. Seeing their warm and friendly behavior, and the fact that they themselves drank the tea, Rayhan didn't refuse this time. But after drinking the tea, Rayhan felt dizzy. It turned out that the woman secretly put drugs in the tea she drank. At this time, the villains who had been watching Rayhan appeared. In fact, they were all in the same game. The gangsters were about to force Rayhan into the car when Amir arrived. Amir is very good at fighting and overpowers all the gangsters in one go. Rayhan was so scared that she jumped into Amir's arms. At that moment, Rayhan felt more secure than ever. Then Amir took Rayhan back home. Lindy was so angry to see her daughter-in-law back that she almost bit her teeth. On the other hand, the maid talked to the security guard about Lindy framing Rayhan. The guard was honest and couldn't bear to see Rayhan being bullied at home. So he decided to tell Amir the truth, but the maid saw him talking to Amir. Realizing that it's not good, she rushes down to divert Amir's attention and tells the guard not to say anything. The guard didn't dare to disobey the maid because she was his wife, but the guard went home. But he couldn't get his mind off it. His mother saw something wrong with him. He then told her what had happened. Her mother encouraged him to tell the truth and be an honest boy. So the guard went to the office and found Amir. This time the security guard hid part of the truth. He just said that he himself saw Lindy and Rayhan together and thought Lindy pushed Rayhan and that it was him who told Tycoon about it. Amir then realizes that he misunderstood his wife. When he got back, Amir told his mother that they misunderstood Rayhan. Lindy got nervous and thought her son knew the truth. But after she heard him say that the security guard had told her, she was a bit relieved. Amir wanted to apologize to Rayhan but didn't know how to face her. He can only do what he can to help Rayhan, 
Amir overheard Rayhan talking to the housekeeper. He knew that Rayhan was unhappy at home and wanted to go to the beach. So Amir asked Rayhan if she wanted to go out, but she refused. Amir realizes that she's still mad at him, not that she doesn't want to go. So he shouted, I want to take you there. Then the two of them went to the beach. Amir said that the sea was magical and that he would come here whenever he was unhappy. The sea heals the pain and the wind blows away the worries. Looking at the calm sea, Rayhan's tension seems to have relaxed. The conflict between her and Amir gradually dissipated. On the other hand, a man came to Tycoon's house and claimed to be Amir's sister's boyfriend. Lindy saw how poor he looked and ordered the security guards to kick him out. Then she angrily asked her daughter what was going on. It turns out the man was Layla's online boyfriend. They exchanged identifying information online. Layla felt inferior because her legs were paralyzed, so she sent him a picture of Rayhan. With a twinkle in her eye Lindy had another bad idea. A poor woman is falsely accused of breaking an expensive vase by her mother in law She tried to explain that she was never in the living room, but her mother in law insisted that she did it. While the two of them are arguing, her love rival Lana shows up. Surprisingly, Anna helps Rayhan out. Rayhan thanked Anna for helping her. Anna said it is alright, she just doesn't like Lindy's bullying. The two of them got to know each other better as they chatted. Then Anna asked Rayhan about her education. Rayhan said that even though she graduated from high school, she always wanted to go to college. But now that she's married, she can't go to school. Anna said, you can study online to take the exam. Anna brought Rayhan a computer that night. Rayhan didn't know how to thank Anna. The next day, Anna took Rayhan to breakfast. When they came out, Anna said she forgot her bag and had to go back, leaving Rayhan standing alone on the street. At this time, a hooligan came over to accost. Rayhan told him to leave quickly or she would call the police. But the hooligan was not afraid of him. He was even more aggressive. And Amir saw this scene. Amir was so jealous that he got out of the car and walked over to the hooligan. When the hooligan saw Amir, he immediately turned around and left. Then Amir asked his wife who the man was. Rayhan said she didn't know him either. He was just a boring guy. And Anna has been staring at them behind their backs. It turns out she was the one who called Amir and the hooligan was Amir's sister's online boyfriend Mike. Since Amir's sister sent Rayhan's photos to Mike, Lindy confiscated her daughter's computer. Then Lindy contacted Mike and bribed him with money. Lindy then put on a show with Anna to get her to approach Rayhan and give her the computer. So Anna used the computer to send a lot of flirty messages to Mike when Rayhan wasn't looking. Mike responded to the messages. That day Amir said that a friend had invited him and his wife to his wedding. Rayhan gladly agreed. But Rayon didn't have a dress to show for it. While she was struggling, the housekeeper brought a gift box, which was Amir's special dress for Rayon. The housekeeper told Rayon to try it on. When Amir returned home, he was greeted by his beautiful wife. At that moment, Amir was mesmerized by Rayon's beauty. Then Amir asked her if she was ready and Rayon said she had to go to the restroom. Suddenly a message pops up on her computer. Amir opens it and sees his wife's flirting messages with another man and her complaining about him and his mom. Amir clicks on the man's avatar and realizes that he's the hoodlum who stood with his wife that day. He didn't realize that his wife was such a slut and left in anger. When Rayhan came out of the bathroom, she didn't see Amir, which was a bit confusing for her. Anna and Lindy knew their plan had worked. When they saw Amir leaving in anger, the wedding is about to start, but Amir's phone is not working, which makes Rayhan a bit anxious. When Amir came back, he brought a divorce decree. Rayhan has no idea what she did wrong. Amir said, you know what you're doing, how dare you ask me to tell you? Rayhan didn't understand that her husband suddenly humiliated her for no reason. Amir doesn't even want to talk about it because he just wants Rayhan to sign the divorce papers and leave the house. He doesn't want to see Rayhan for a second. Then he comes over and says that no one can save you now. My son will never forgive you for what you have done. But Rayhan didn't know what she had done to make her husband so angry. Lindy said of course, it was the messages about your affair with another man that were found out. When Rayhan didn't understand what the information was, Lindy realized that she had blabbed. She said sign the divorce papers and go back to your countryside and left. While Rayhan was thinking, he opened his cell phone and found nothing. Then Rayhan thought about the computer. Sure enough, she found a lot of messages on the computer, but they weren't from her. So she rushed to Amir to clarify, but Amir wouldn't listen to any of Rayhan's explanations. All he wants now is for Rayhan to sign the divorce papers. He doesn't want to keep arguing with her anymore. He needs to settle this before his dad comes home or Rayhan will get his dad in trouble again. Rayhan is so upset that she doesn't know who will believe her now. Only the housekeeper comes in to comfort her and recognizes the computer as Layla's. She takes the computer to Layla and explains what happened. Layla immediately realized 
that her brother had misunderstood her sister-in-law. Because the hooligan was her own lying boyfriend, she wanted to go to her brother to tell him the truth. But Lindy suddenly appeared. Lindy took away her daughter's computer and cell phone and warned Layla not to go anywhere and to go to the hospital with her. Layla didn't know what to do when the housekeeper came in. Layla asked the housekeeper to borrow her cell phone and then called her online boyfriend. She explained the situation to Mike and asked him to come over to clear up the misunderstanding. Mike gladly agreed. Layla thought that the misunderstanding would finally be cleared up, but she didn't know that Mike would immediately tell Lindy. Layla then told her sister-in-law what happened and apologized to Rayhan. Rayhan didn't blame Layla. She just wanted to clear her name as soon as possible. Layla then called her brother and asked him to come home and clear all the misunderstandings. When Layla came out of her sister-in-law's room, Lindy was waiting. She didn't want her daughter to ruin her plan, so she took her daughter to the hospital. When Amir gets home, Mike unexpectedly arrives. Rayhan tells Mike to tell Amir the truth, but Mike said, Honey, I'm here to take you away. Rayhan broke down and said, I don't know you at all. Why are you insulting my innocence? Mike went on to say, Honey, don't hide it anymore. Come with me now and get out of here. Then he went to pull Rayhan's hand. Amir finally relented and punched Mike down. Mike, however, remained adamant that Rayhan was his lover. Enraged, Amir punches Mike twice more and then tells the security guards to get rid of Mike. The misunderstanding between Rayon and Amir is getting deeper and deeper. Amir couldn't wait any longer and was about to call his father, who was on a business trip, to tell him that he wanted a divorce from Rayhan. But Rayhan stops Amir because she doesn't want to worry her father-in-law who is dying of cancer. On the other hand, the injured Mike called Lindy to report the situation. It turns out that Lindy was the one who made Mike do that. Mike asked Lindy to pay him the balance. After Lindy and Mike met, Lindy quickly gave Mike the money. Mike counted the money and said that the amount was not right because it had been punched by her son three times for no reason. So it had to be overcharged. Lindy ignored Mike and ordered the driver to drive away. But she didn't know that she had already set herself on fire. On the other hand, Layla answered the nurse's call and yelled at her brother to pick her up. Then she told Amir the truth in front of her sister-in-law. But Amir still doesn't understand one thing. If he's just an online boyfriend, why did Mike insist that he knows Rayhan? And why did he want Rayhan to go with him? Layla was also wondering about this. When she opens her computer, she realizes that many of the messages are not from her. Amir doesn't know what's going on, but he knows he's misunderstood Rayhan. So he tried to explain to Rayhan, but she doesn't want to talk about it anymore. This makes Amir feel guilty. When Lindy came home and saw her daughter, she realized something was wrong. Layla also made it clear that she had told her brother and sister-in-law the truth. Lindy realized that her plan had fallen apart. Before she could get mad at her daughter, a phone call came in. It turned out the call was from Mike. Mike threatened to give Lindy $5 million immediately, or he would let everyone know her secret. Lindy then realized that her weakness had been taken by Mike, so she had to tell Anna about it. Anna was angry at her for being such a stupid teammate, but they had no choice but to pay Mike. Lindy warned Mike that this was the last time he'd ever show up in front of her again. Y este es solo el comienzo, señora Capitán. Empezaremos a vernos muy frecuentemente. Lindy raised her hand to hit her daughter-in-law, but her son stopped her. Lindy was furious and said, I'm teaching your wife a lesson for you. But her son said, This is between us. It's none of your business. Lindy didn't expect her son to treat her so harshly and left angrily. Rayon knew that Lindy did it to take it out on her son because she had just slapped him. And it was all because of Anna's birthday party. At that party, Rayhan was all dressed up, but Anna mocked Rayhan for being poor and uneducated and for being forced to marry a man she doesn't love. Rayhan's pride was trampled on, and she felt so upset that she wanted to cry. Amir held Rayhan's hand tightly and left with her. When he got back, Amir wanted to talk to his wife, but Rayhan was in no mood to talk. Anxious, Amir shouted at her, Since you've married me, forget about your pride. Rayhan's frustration of the past few days exploded in this moment. Amir actually realized that what he just said was too much. On the contrary, Lindy didn't care who was right, because she just wanted to teach this bold daughter-in-law a lesson. But she was stopped by her son. Then Lindy, who had left in anger, got a call from Mike. Mike demanded that she give him another $5 million immediately, or he would tell the truth about Lindy bribing him to ruin Rayon's reputation. Unfortunately, Lindy didn't agree this time, and said she would call the police if Mike harassed her again. This made Mike furious and he vowed to make this woman pay. That day Anna was driving Lindy to the club when she was stopped by a car. Mike took Lindy at gunpoint. When Rayhan saw this, she didn't think twice before rushing to her mother-in-law's aid. Lindy was able to escape, but Rayhan was taken hostage by Mike. Anna wanted to call the police, but Lindy stopped her immediately. 
Lindy said that if she called the police, her and Anna's secret would be exposed, and she could never let her son and husband know about these despicable things. When she got home, Lindy got a call from Mike. Mike asked her to prepare $10 million in three hours, or she would never see her daughter-in-law again. Her conversation was overheard by Amir. Amir asks what happened to his mother. Lindy realized she couldn't keep it a secret, so she had to tell him. Amir heard the story and immediately went to rescue his wife. Lindy tried to stop her son, but Amir wouldn't listen. Amir took the money to Mike's mountain alone. Mike gets the money and tells Amir to go inside. When Amir saw Rehan, she was already scared out of her wits. Then he rushed to help Rehan untie her, but Mike changed his mind. He not only wanted to take the money, but also to assault Rehan. Amir had no choice but to rush in and fight him. In the heat of the moment, Mike shot Amir directly. His blood was pouring out. Mike, fearing for the death of someone, left the place and locked the door. Rehan found a rack and quickly cleaned Amir's wound. Luckily, the bullet only grazed his arm and didn't hurt his bones. But since neither of them had their cell phones with them and the door was locked, they were forced to stay here and wait for help. Amir had a fever that night and was shivering from the cold. Rehan got a blanket to cover him. Amir then apologizes for what he said and asks Rehan to forgive him. Rehan told him not to talk now but to rest, but he also felt sorry for his wife, who had been so busy for him, and asked her to get some rest too. So Rehan laid down next to Amir. They spent the rest of the night together. The next day, Amir's health got worse. Rehan knew she couldn't just sit there and wait any longer, so she got a crowbar and started prying at the door. Miraculously, she was able to pry the door open, so Rehan took Amir down the mountain. But while walking, Amir collapses on the ground because he has no strength to go on. Rehan tried to lift Amir up, but it was no use. Unfortunately, it looked like there was no one but the two of them in the middle of nowhere. She had to leave Amir behind for a while and go down the mountain to look for help. This time, she was lucky because she met a good Samaritan. Amir was then taken to the hospital. After resuscitation, Amir's life was no longer in danger. Looking at Amir on the hospital bed, Rehan couldn't be angry with him anymore. She forgave Amir for everything he had done to hurt her. The couple's conflict has completely vanished, and Amir seems to have fallen in love with this simple and kind girl. At that moment, Amir's best friend, Jack, came to the hospital. Jack called the police because he couldn't reach Amir. The police told him about Amir's stay at the hospital. The three of them agreed to keep it a secret. On the other hand, Tycoon returned home from his business trip. Seeing that neither of the children were at home, Tycoon asked his wife where they were. Lindy was stumped for an answer. Coincidentally, that's when Amir and the others returned. Lindy was so excited to see her son home, that she went up to him and hugged him, but she bumped into Amir's wound. Tycoon sees something is wrong and asks how his son got hurt. Amir explains that it fell off his motorcycle. Although Tycoon was not pleased, at least the incident was dealt with. But then Lindy gets a call from the hospital and realizes that her son has a gunshot wound, and she blamed her daughter-in-law for everything. Her mother-in-law was held hostage by a gangster but she was kidnapped by the gangster when she tried to help her. When Rayhan returns home, her mother-in-law tries to kick her out of the house because her son was shot by a gangster while trying to save Rayhan. Lindy was furious that Rayhan was a pest and almost killed her son. If the hospital hadn't called her to inform her of the incident, she would never have known about her son's injury. Just when Rayhan didn't know what to say in his defense, Amir approached him. He tells his mother that he was the one who didn't let Rayhan talk about it, and if she wants to blame him, she should blame him. Amir goes on to say that the woman you're blaming is the one who saved my life. Lindy then realizes that her daughter-in-law isn't the same person she can bully around, and that may Rayhan feel more favorable towards Amir. She thought Amir had accepted her as his wife. Later, when Amir was talking to his friend, Jack said he noticed Amir's loving eyes towards Rayhan. He also asked Amir if he was in love with her because he risked his life to save her. Amir remembered that he had told Jack many times that he wanted to divorce Rayhan. However, at this moment, Facing Jack's question, he said against his will that I saved her, because I couldn't bear to see her suffer, and that I would have done the same if someone else was in danger. So don't confuse sympathy with love. Rayhan overhears him. She realized that she was nothing to Amir, but at the end of the day, she still tenderly changes Amir's wound. Amir looked at her with love in his eyes. It was obvious that he had fallen in love with Rayhan, but Rayhan was already hurt by his unintentional words. Rayhan finished changing his wound and went back to her room. Amir seemed to sense that she was angry, but he didn't know why she was angry. Amir didn't sleep well that night. The next morning, he opens his room and finds Rayhan still awake. He can't bear to wake Rayhan up but bumps into a chair as he tries to sneak out. Rayhan is awakened by the noise. Amir can't only greet her awkwardly, but Rayhan still doesn't want to talk to this man who is not what he says he is. Then Rayhan approached her father-in-law and told him that her aunt in the countryside was sick and had no one to take care of her. So she wanted to go back and take care of her for a while. 
her father-in-law doted on her and said, Of course, you can do whatever you want. And so Rayhan packed her bags and set off on her own. Espero que nunca regreses. Y que sea la última vez que atraviesas esa puerta. A short time later, Emir came back from work to get his wife to change his wound, but there was no sign of her. Lindy said that Rayon had left in the morning with his luggage, so I can change your dressing too. However, that arrogant Emir was not happy at all. This woman left without informing me, does she still think I'm her husband? I'll have to call her and give her a good scolding, although it seems to be dominating his wife. But when the phone call is actually made, Emir gets scared again. Hello? ¿Cómo estás? Uh, quería hacerte una pregunta. No sé dónde está la casa para mi cambio de venda. Eso era todo. Nos vemos. At night, Amir was so anxious that he didn't even sleep. This woman didn't send me a message all day. Is it so hard to say a word? No. I have to call again. This time, I will strongly condemn her. But when Rayhan answered his phone, Llamo por la comida de Injir. No la encuentro. En el armario del baño. Bien. Muchas gracias. Solo te llamaba para eso. Buenas noches. Oh, suena tan cómoda. Todo parece ir bien. This man obviously misses his wife, but he doesn't dare to tell her. Then it occurred to Emir that since his wife was back her home, it would be disrespectful to her if he didn't make a date with his friend. So he immediately took out his cell phone and called Jack. He was going to ask Jack to come out and get drunk tonight. But early the next morning, Rayhan was woken up by a sharp knock on her door. She opened the door to see her to face husband arrive. This newlywed couple slept separately every day, one on the floor and the other on the bed, just because they were forced into marriage after only knowing each other for one day. Despite their mutual affection for each other since they got married, neither of them expressed it. Amir was lying on the floor, tossing and turning, unable to sleep. When the elder knocked on the door, they put the covers away and stood together as a loving couple. It turned out that Rayhan Zen had heard the noise, and thought that Amir was not used to the cold weather in the countryside. Amir explained that the bed was warm, then her aunt was relieved and left, so as not to disturb her aunt. The two of them had to lie together on the small bed. It was the first time they had slept together since they were married. Amir couldn't help but give her aunt a thumbs up in his heart. The next day, Amir woke up and was mesmerized by Rayhan's beauty. Rayhan's hymn was currently resting on his chest, and Amir had no intention of removing it. Soon Rayhan woke up too. She also noticed that her hand was in an inappropriate place. So she quickly retracted her hand before Amir woke up. But she didn't know that Amir was just pretending to be asleep. Rayhan carefully gets up and prepares breakfast for him. Amir looked at Rayhan's back with love in his eyes. Rayhan prepared some light meals for him and Amir ate them with great relish. Afterwards, Amir took her aunt to the best hospital in the area. When she came back, Amir started chopping wood and built a new den for her aunt's dog. Rayhan was shocked and asked Amir how she did it. Amir proudly said, I graduated in architecture. Although I have never built a house, it's not that difficult to build a dog house. Amir loves this life and would like to live here forever if he could. Rayhan also had a brief moment of relaxation here until her aunt recovered and it was time for them both to go back. Lindy was overjoyed to see her son back but her smile disappeared when she saw Rayhan coming back with her. On the other hand, Tycoon also came back from the office and headed home. When Rayhan saw her father-in-law's car, she rushed forward to greet him. But as soon as Tycoon greeted Rayhan, he suddenly turned pale and stood up unsteadily. Tycoon realized he was having a cancer attack and told Rayhan not to tell the rest of his family. Rayhan had to call his driver to drag Tycoon to the car. They then quickly headed to the hospital. Rayhan's eyes were swollen with tears as she looked at Tycoon who was unconscious. She prayed for her father-in-law's safety. Perhaps her prayers had worked. Tycoon slowly woke up. Rayhan wanted to call Amir, but Tycoon insisted that Rayhan keep it a secret. Then Tycoon said that if Amir found out, he would tell everyone, and then my daughter would not be in the mood to continue treating her legs for fear of my condition. Then her legs will never recover. So you must promise to keep my secret. I'll tell my family that I'm going on a business trip for a while. So hurry home and don't make them suspicious. Rayhan understood and returned home in a state of despair. Obviously, she was extremely sad, but in front of others, she had to pretend that nothing had happened, and even when she cried, she had to hide and wipe her tears secretly. Rayhan came to Layla's room that night and saw that Layla had already fallen asleep after taking the medicine. Rayhan suddenly felt very sorry for her sister, because she was so young but had to live in a wheelchair. She also understood why her father-in-law insisted on keeping her secret. The next day at dinner, the housekeeper brought special milk. Amir had asked the housekeeper to prepare it because he knew Rayhan had a cold. He said if Rayhan drank this, his cold would go away soon. When Lindy found out that Rayhan had a cold, she ordered the maid to send Rayhan to the hospital. 
don't let Rehan's virus spread to her at home. Rehan didn't argue and immediately got up and prepared to go to the hospital because it was the perfect opportunity for her to visit her father-in-law. But Tycoon's condition seemed to be getting worse. Rehan couldn't stop crying at the sight of her father-in-law. But then the housekeeper arrived at the hospital. She originally came to visit Rayon, but she realized that it was her master who really needed to see her. Tycoon also asked the housekeeper to keep his secret. After that, Rayon decided to let the housekeeper go home first, and she stayed behind to take care of her father-in-law. On the other hand, Amir came home and didn't see his wife. He called Rayon, but no one answered. He thought maybe Rayon was with his mother, but his mother's phone was also unanswered. Amir was getting anxious. The next day, when Rayhan arrives home, Amir immediately asks her where she was last night and demands an explanation from her today. Rayhan took care of her critically ill father-in-law all night long, but her husband mistook her for having an affair. Rayhan doesn't defend herself against her husband's questioning because she promised to keep her father-in-law's secret. Amir is fed up with his wife's constant state of being aggrieved but not telling him anything. Just as he is about to press Rayhan further, the housekeeper walks in. She says that Rayhan spent the night at her relative's house because she asked Rayon to deliver something to her relative. This is all her fault, as she forgot to convey this to Amir last night. Amir doesn't understand why Rayon has to hide such things from him. But Rayon still doesn't say a word. He can only leave in anger. Their argument was overheard by the maid outside the house. The maid then told Lindy about it. Lindy sensed something was wrong when she realized that her daughter-in-law had stayed out all night and even the housekeeper hadn't made excuses for her. She immediately asked the housekeeper what had happened. The housekeeper still insisted that Rayhan was at her relative's house last night. So Lindy called the housekeeper's relative when she found out which one she was staying at. She found out that Rayhan did deliver something to them. But it was weeks ago. Lindy realized that she had caught her daughter-in-law in a lie and immediately invited her to her house. Then she immediately called her son and asked him to come home as it was very important as the four of them met face to face. Rayhan's lies were exposed. Amir continues to question Rayhan about where he was last night. Rayhan still won't tell him. Amir finally got fed up and asked Rayhan for a divorce. Amir called his lawyer and asked him to prepare a divorce decree. When Lindy found out the news, she immediately reported the news to Ah. Uh. A few hours later, Amir returned with the divorce papers and asked Rayhan to sign them. Rayhan had no choice, but then Lindy walked in. Surprisingly, Lindy didn't throw stones, but said that Rayhan was with her yesterday, and she was the one who asked Rayhan not to tell him about it. Although Amir doesn't understand, why his wife kept it a secret from him. He believes his mother. Rayhan is also confused as to why her mother-in-law, who has always hated her the most, is helping her out. After this interrogation, Rayhan approached her mother-in-law and asked her why. Lindy said, I did it for the sake of the family's stability. Do you think I lied for you? You think too much. Indeed. In fact, Rayhan was overthinking it. It turns out that Anna Sidekick accidentally saw Amir's divorce papers when she was working at Amir's company. Anand then made a copy of the divorce papers and brought them to Lindy. Lindy was shocked because Amir's divorce came with a condition that he would transfer 10% of the company's shares to Rayhan. This means that Rayhan will become a shareholder of the company and a real rich woman if she agrees to the divorce. Lindy, of course, can let that happen. And Tycoon finally got better and returned to the mansion. The sword of Damocles hanging over Rayhan's head finally disappeared. But a relationship with Amir became very tense again. Rayhan had just been taking care of a very ill father-in-law in the hospital. But then he came home full of energy. Rayhan thought her father-in-law had recovered. But she didn't realize that Tycoon was just holding on to his body. So that his family wouldn't worry. It wasn't until she saw the housekeeper crying in secret that she realized her father-in-law had given up going abroad for surgery to spend his last moments with his family. So Rayhan went to her father-in-law and had a long talk. She encouraged him to fight his illness and to spend more time with his family in the future. But Lindy sees this and thinks her daughter-in-law is seducing her husband. So she sends Anna to steal Tycoon's will. The two women are going to forge a will to discredit Rayhan as a money-grubbing woman. That day Amir's little niece, Masa, came to play. The whole family loved her, especially Rayhan, who was very close to her. But when Lindy saw Masa, she hated her. And Masal seems to be very scared of Lindy. She hugged Rayhan and wanted to play with her. When Masal got tired, Rayhan put her to bed. But Masal saw Amir coming and asked him to sleep with her. Amir had no choice but to agree. Suddenly Masal asked Amir how much he loved Rayhan. This question stumped both of them. The atmosphere suddenly became a little awkward. Masal is a child who says what she wants to say. She held Rayhan and Amir's hands together. After Masal's joke, Amir and Rayhan's relationship eased up a lot. Then they took Masal to the beach. The three of them looked like a family as they played happily together. Rayhan felt the happiness of a harmonious family. On the other hand, 
Lindy and Anna are scheming something bigger. This time, they are confident that they can drive Rehan back to the countryside. That day, Lindy put the fecal on Amir's desk, but Masal took it and used it as a sketchbook. Lindy tries to get it back, but Masal is too firm to give it to her. When Rehan enters the room from outside, Masal runs to her. Rehan asked her mother-in-law what she was doing that made the little girl cry. Lindy told her fiercely, this is my house, I don't have to tell you what I'm doing. Amir hears this and pushes his way in. When Lindy saw her son coming, she immediately acted as if she was aggrieved. She said that her daughter-in-law had treated her very badly. Amir, however, did not hesitate to expose his mother's lies and said that he had heard everything outside the door. Lindy tried to argue and asked, if you'd rather trust an outsider than your mother who raised you. Amir only believes what his seasoned ears. Lindy goes on to say that your wife married you for our family's money, and you will see her for what she is sooner or later. Masal was scared away by Lindy's fierce look. Mama, no quiero oír otra palabra más. Amir and Rehan left the room and found Masal in the study, and Lindy was so furious that she had to get the will by any means necessary. She even sneaked into her son and daughter-in-law's room, but there was no sign of the will. The next day, Amir woke up and was greeted with a feast for the eyes. Amir couldn't help but take out his cell phone to record this beautiful moment, because later he was going to send Masal home. On the other hand, Lindy is late in finding the will and has to inform Anna first. Anna is furious and hands up the phone, after blaming Lindy for her missing out on a great opportunity. In order for Anna to take her to the top of the rich world, she doesn't dare to offend Anna, so she takes out her anger on the maid. When Rehan comes back from Masal's house, she is saddened to see the divorce papers prepared by Amir. Amir also sees the divorce papers when he enters the room. After spending so many days together, he thinks he knows his wife well enough. So Amir tears up the divorce papers in front of her and says, We don't need this anymore. Rayan was immediately moved by his behavior. Then Amir went to his study and noticed a piece of paper on the floor. Amir picks it up and realizes that it's Masal's drawing. And on the reverse side of the drawing is the altered will. Amir was shocked when he read the will because he didn't realize that he had underestimated his wife. It turns out that what his mother told him was true Rayhan had married him for his money. But this time, Amir doesn't want to be impulsive, but wants to see how much longer Rayhan can play the role of a good wife. Rayhan offers him coffee, but he refuses. Then Amir ignored her and left, leaving the innocent Rayhan in the lurch. Lindy knew her son too well and was sure that he must have reacted this way because he had seen the fake will. So, she immediately informed Anna and said, Our plan has worked. So my son will kick Rayon out of the house, and you will be my new daughter-in-law. But Lindy wasn't satisfied enough and wanted to add more fuel to the fire. Finalmente esta pesadilla terminó, querida. Lindy had just accused her daughter-in-law of being a gold digger. But the next minute she was giving her daughter-in-law a valuable necklace. Tycoon is shocked and doesn't understand why his wife is suddenly being so generous. Lindy said that this ancestral necklace should have been given to her daughter-in-law a long time ago. Tycoon was glad that his wife had finally accepted Rayhan. Tycoon then handed the necklace over to Rayhan but was turned down on the spot because she thought it was too precious. Tycoon insisted that Rayhan take the necklace and hoped that she would wear it every day as a fulfillment of his wish. Rayhan could only agree. When Amir saw his wife wearing the expensive necklace, he was even more convinced that Rayhan was marrying him for the money. And that's exactly why Lindy gave Rayhan the necklace. But Amir didn't show his displeasure. He even helped Rayhan put on the necklace the next day. Rayhan was flattered. But she didn't know that her husband just wanted to see how long she could play the role of a good wife as a gold digger. Meanwhile, Rayhan was just so happy. It was Layla's birthday and Rayhan was going to make a cake for her. When Rayhan was making the cake, she remembered the scene when Amir helped her put on the necklace and felt so sweet that she made the cake even more attentive. But Lindy poured the cake into the sink. Rayhan doesn't understand why her mother-in-law did that. Lindy said mockingly, my daughter will never eat this kind of cheap food. Don't think that if you marry into a rich family, you are a rich wife. In my eyes you will always be a rustic girl from the countryside. You don't deserve this necklace at all. Then she reached out to rip the necklace off. But Rayhan held onto the necklace because to her, it was a gift from her father-in-law. Lindy was furious and grabbed a glass of water and threw it on Rayhan. Anna, who came to the party, saw the scene and didn't expect Lindy to be so cruel. This is Rayhan's dress for her birthday party. Since the dress was wet, Rayhan couldn't attend the party. After that, Anna even came to comfort Rayhan. Anna said Lindy didn't like your marriage from the beginning. That's why she's targeting you. The best thing you can do is to leave this family. Rayhan didn't know how to reply to her words. Soon the party started, but Amir was wondering why his wife hadn't shown up yet. The housekeeper secretly told Amir what had just happened. Amir suddenly felt very sorry for Rayhan, so he went to pick out a dress for Rayhan. Rayhan was again touched by this man. The moment she changed into the dress, Amir was unconsciously mesmerized by her. At this moment, 
He forgets that he is acting. At the party, Anna and Lindy were complacent that Rayhan would never show up. But the next moment, Rayhan appeared in a gorgeous pink dress. The smiles on both their faces disappeared. Without a doubt, Rayhan was the center of attention at the party. Anna rolled her eyes a million times when she saw this scene. Then when Rayhan got up to go to the bathroom, Anna said she wanted to go too. Anna pushed Rayhan into the pool. When Rayhan had no defense against her, she was trying to get Rayhan's dress wet, but she didn't realize that Rayhan couldn't swim at all. Anna panicked as she watched her struggling in the water and just stared at Rayhan in silence. Suddenly, Amir jumped into the pool and dragged Rayhan to the shore. Then Amir leaned over and felt that Rayhan wasn't breathing, so he tried to give Rayhan artificial respiration. Anna's face looked like she had eaten poop when she saw this. Luckily, Rayhan was saved. When she looked at Amir, he realized how much Rayhan meant to him. Back in her room, Rayhan realizes that her wedding ring is missing. Amir reassured her that as long as she was safe, it didn't matter if anything else was missing. In fact, Rayhan's behavior makes Amir not understand this woman again, because he feels Rayhan is not a woman who is greedy for money. Maybe he should trust Rayhan for once. Then Amir called his friend Jack and prepared a big surprise for Rayhan, and his call was overheard by his sister. The next day, Anna came to Rayhan and apologized and said, she didn't mean to knock Rayhan down yesterday. Rayhan didn't take the matter seriously and forgave Anna. Layla comes in and says to Rayhan, my brother has a surprise for you. It's going to be the most romantic date ever. With a twinkle in Anna's eye, she gets a bad idea. She said Amir is really this thoughtful. You must look good. Let's go shopping and buy some nice clothes together. Layla also asked her sister-in-law to go and get dressed up. Of course, Rayhan wanted to look her best for Amir and agreed. Before going out, she went to the bathroom. Anna took this opportunity to steal Rayhan's credit card. While shopping, Anna swiped her own card and bought Rayhan a dancing expensive clothes. Rayhan tried to refuse, but Anna said, take this as my apology. When Rayhan saw Anna's firm attitude, she could only agree. However, the next moment, Anna turned around and called Amir. She bought her love rival a dancing designer dresses, but sent the bill to her rival's husband. Anna said your wife maxed out my credit card. Amir couldn't believe that his wife was really a vain woman. But when he got home, instead of blaming his wife, Amir bought her a diamond ring. He put the ring on Rayhan's finger and took her somewhere. Rayhan knew that Amir had prepared a surprise for her and went to change into her best dress. The moment Rayhan got changed, Amir was once again amazed by her beauty. Then Amir took Rayhan to the beach. The soft sandy beach and the warm sea breeze were soothing to Rayhan. The two of them strolled along the beautiful beach together, letting the sea lapping at their feet. Amir blindfolded Rayhan. The moment he let go of her hand, she saw the surprise Amir had arranged for her. They sat her day on the beach and enjoyed a romantic lunch. Rayhan was feeling very happy. Amir had prepared a poncho for her, and a romantic violin was playing in her ears. The atmosphere between the two of them is full of love. Amir confessed his love for Rayhan, and she was completely mesmerized by the moment. Then they danced gracefully on the beach to the beautiful music. They were looking at each other, and the atmosphere was so ambiguous. But then Amir suddenly looked at the necklace around Rayhan's neck. Reality was like a cold rain that dust the flames of his love. He still couldn't accept that Rayhan was with him for money. So Amir took out a blank check and warned her to stop playing the good wife. Don't you just want money? Fill this check with as much money as you want. All I ask is that you stop acting in front of me. Amir said this and left alone, leaving Rayhan frowning on the beach. Although she didn't know what she did wrong, her heart was completely broken by Amir. When she got back, Rayhan asked Amir one last time what she had done wrong. But Amir didn't want to talk about the money grubbing and said to his wife, You know what you've done. Then Amir left the house. Lindy came over to her and threw stones at her. She said to Rayhan, You should have left the first day you married into my family. You didn't listen to me and left my son. That was your biggest mistake. Now you're going to shed your tears here. Rayhan cried so hard that she couldn't stop crying. She had come to the city for so many days and didn't know what this marriage had brought her. She doesn't know if she'll keep her promise to her father-in-law. Now that her father-in-law is away on a business trip, Rayhan doesn't know what she should do now. The next day when Amir came back from the office, Rayhan said to him, you're too cruel to me, you're blind, you'll never see the truth. Her words pierced Amir's proud and sensitive heart. So he said angrily to Rayhan, I feel sick breathing under the same roof as you. That was the last straw that broke Rayhan's back. Rayhan didn't want to stay in this house anymore, so she packed her bags and left. Lindy, of course, didn't miss the chance to taunt Rayhan. She said that she will divorce her son from Rayhan as soon as possible, and Rayhan won't be able to get a penny out of it. Amir looked at Rayhan and suddenly didn't want her to leave. But in the end, he still watched Rayhan leave alone. After Rayhan left, Lindy and Anna immediately started to celebrate. After all their hard work, they finally kicked Rayhan out of the house. Rayhan was sitting on the bench in agony. 
because she didn't know what she had done wrong and why Amir was doing this to her. On the other side, Amir is looking at the empty room, thinking about everything that had happened here. He suddenly felt a huge sense of loss. Amir suddenly misses Rayhan, but he knows that it's too late. They can't love each other anymore. Amir is sad and ready to leave, but as soon as he opens the door, Rayhan suddenly appears, causing Amir to have mixed feelings. Rayhan went on to say, I have reasons why I can never leave. I will fight for my marriage from now on. One day you will realize that you are wrong. I will wait patiently for that day to come. Then Rayhan tore up the check in front of Amir. Rayhan, who had run away from home, came home only to be kicked out again by her mother-in-law. Her mother-in-law says that this will be the worst decision she's ever made and as her every move watched. Depressed, Rayhan goes out for a walk and realizes she's lost her wallet. While she was in a hurry, a girl found the wallet and returned it to her. Rayhan was grateful to her. But she didn't say anything and turned to leave when she was attracted by a passerby holding a loaf of bread. She seemed to be hungry, so Rayon bought her some food as a thank you. Then the girl said her name was Bella and that she lived in the neighborhood. But when Rayon asked her where her parents were, Bella suddenly became wary and made an excuse to leave. Bella seemed to be very afraid of being discovered. Rayon felt uneasy when he saw her unusual reaction. So he followed Bella all the way. After walking for a while, Rayhan followed her to an abandoned factory. Bella was nervous when she saw Rayhan. Rayhan reassured her not to be afraid and said she didn't mean any harm. Bella then relaxed, feeling safe. Bella told the truth about herself. She had been an orphan since she was a child, but after she was adopted, she was abused by her stepmother. So Bella ran away and started to live on the streets without a place to stay. Rayhan felt so sorry for the girl that she smuggled her home. Then she put Bella in the guest room of the house and gave her food. Rayhan told her to keep her hidden and not to be found. Rayhan also bought Bella a cell phone to make it easier for her to communicate. The next day, Rayhan comes out of the guest house at a scene by the maid. The maid thought it was strange and reported it to Lindy immediately. When Rayhan came back to the guest house, Lindy was already standing in the guest house. This made Rayhan nervous because if Lindy found Bella, she would kick her out without a second thought. Luckily, Lindy didn't find anything in the end. After Lindy left, Rayhan rushed into the guest room, but she searched for Bella but couldn't find her. A few minutes later, Rayhan found Bella in her bedroom. Turns out, Bella had just heard someone coming into the guest room and ran out the window. Rayhan knew that keeping her at home wasn't a permanent solution, so she found a hotel for Bella to stay in. Coincidentally, on their way to the hotel, they ran into Bella's stepmother. She grabbed Bella and tried to take her away by force. Rayhan stops her in her tracks, realizing that Bella is in more danger outside than at her home. So Rayhan was ready to take Bella home again. Anna, who had been watching Rayhan, saw this. With a twinkle in Anna's eye, a bad idea was born. She approached the stepmother and asked her if she wanted to make money. When the stepmother heard there was money to be made, she was immediately interested. When Rayhan got back, she got a call from the stepmother. The stepmother said that if Rayhan gave her $100,000 in cash, she would leave Bella alone. Rayhan agreed for the sake of Bella's freedom. The next day, she brought the money to the place where the deal was made, but the stepmother didn't show up and sent a man to get the money. Rayhan gave him the money without thinking too much. Meanwhile, Amir received a call from the bank. The bank manager said that Amir's wife had just withdrawn $100,000 in cash. Amir couldn't understand why Rayhan kept, saying she didn't care about the money, and yet she withdrew so much money in one minute. So he wanted to go home and ask Rayhan about it, but then his cell phone rang again. He unlocked the screen and saw a picture of Rayhan getting money to another man. Amir was furious and decided to find out what this woman was doing. But when Amir got home, before he could ask Rayhan what happened, Bella's stepmother came in with the police. As soon as the stepmother saw Rayhan, she accused her of kidnapping her daughter. Amir was confused. What's going on here? Rayhan explained that she was just trying to protect Bella and wanted Bella to talk to the police about what happened. But Bella disappeared. So the police had to arrest Rayhan for child abduction. Amir tried to stop them, but it was no use. Lindy and Anna were not surprised and even smiled in triumph when they saw this. Si esa llega a aparecer, no lo hará hasta que yo se lo Amir asked his wife through the prison bars why she was in the cell. It turns out that Rayon had brought home a girl who had been abused by her stepmother and wanted her husband to find the girl. Amir suddenly felt sorry for his wife because she was in jail and yet she was worried about a stranger who had nothing to do with her. So Amir promised to find Bella when he comes home and immediately accesses the security camera at the door. His mother panics and calls Anna. Anna tells her to calm down and says she's already blocked the surveillance, which makes Lindy want Anna as her new daughter-in-law even more. A few minutes later, Amir got a call from the police. Due to Bella's stepmother's insistence on pressing charges against Rayon and the fact that Bella hasn't been found yet, 
Rayon is about to be sent to a women's prison to serve her sentence. Amir is in a complete panic. He hasn't thought of any way to save Rayon. Rayon has been taken out of the holding cell and is about to be transferred to a real prison. Rayon is left to grieve alone. But when Amir came to the police station, he had a smile on his face. He told his wife not to worry because he would get her out of jail soon. Then Amir pulled out a surveillance video that clearly showed a man kidnapping Bella. It turns out that last night, Amir found out that his neighbor's house has a surveillance camera at the front door. He begged his neighbor to get the video. Rayhan was finally acquitted. When they got home, Lindy and Anna were shocked to see Rayhan. They couldn't imagine how Rayhan could have come back safe and sound after they framed him. But Rayhan couldn't be happy because she felt that she had harmed Bella. She thinks she put Bella in danger after she brought her home when she was just hungry. Amir reassures her not to feel bad. After all, the police will find Bella soon according to the surveillance. The next day, the police tell them they found a dress on the beach. Rayhan recognizes it as Bella's. Then the police said that Bella had probably been killed. At that moment, Rayhan's mind went blank. The worst was yet to come. Rayhan couldn't accept that Bella had left her. Later, when she went to the beach where Bella was killed, she stumbled upon Bella's headband. Her intuition told her that Bella was still alive. In fact, Bella was being held in a rundown house not far from the beach. She got the kidnapper's cell phone when he wasn't looking. Then Bella dialed Rayhan's number, who had left her cell phone at home. Luckily, Amir got the call. Amir drove to her place. On the other hand, Rayhan found the house on a hunch. But, the kidnapper suddenly came from behind her and covered her mouth. Rayhan was dragged to the house, and together with Bella, they fought against the kidnappers. But they were no match for the kidnappers. At this critical moment, Amir opens the door and knocks the kidnappers out with one punch. After the trouble was solved, it drove away with Rayhan and Bella. When they got home, Lindy saw Bella and panicked because she was afraid that her plan would be discovered. Lindy rushed to inform Bella's stepmother of the news. The stepmother immediately said that if she could get enough money from Lindy, she would make sure that Bella would not give her any trouble. That night, the stepmother brought the police to Rayhan again. Since the stepmother was still nominally Bella's guardian, the police had no choice but to hand Bella back to the stepmother. Rayhan was saddened because she knew that Bella would be abused when she returned home. Amir was impressed by Rayhan's sincerity and kindness, so he promised to find a way to bring Bella back. When Amir arrived at Bella's stepmother's house later in the day, Bella was being abused by her. Amir then rushed to protect Bella behind him. The stepmother warned, this is a family matter. If you don't leave, I'll call the police. Amir said, I have just filmed your crime. If you want the police to know that you are abusing a child, you call the police. The stepmother was so scared that Amir was able to bring Bella back to his house safely. Rayhan thanked Amir for everything he had done for her and said it was the best gift she had ever received. Then Amir and his family announced that Bella is our family from now on and will be living with us. Tycoon was very pleased with Amir's kindness. Everyone welcomed the arrival of Bella. Except Lindy, who felt like she had eaten a fly. Amir, after all this, began to reflect on his mistakes. He thought he must have misunderstood Rayhan. How could such a kind woman be greedy for his money? So Amir decided to apologize to Rayhan. He practiced his formal apology, down scenes of times in front of the mirror, and finally found the courage to approach Rayhan. But they both said they had something to say to each other at the same time. Amir was a gentleman and let Rayhan speak first. But Rayhan's next words left him wanting to cry and speechless. She said, though our marriage is fake, our friendship is real. Even if we can't be husband and wife, we can still be friends. A rural woman has just rescued a girl who was abused by her stepmother. But the police took her away regardless of the truth in order to return her to her guardian. How will the poor girl who tried to escape from her stepmother live the rest of her life? Rayhan watched her being taken away and could not do anything about it, which only broke her heart and made her cry. The next day, Rayhan received a huge bouquet of flowers. Amir is curious to know who sent them, so he goes through his wife's cell phone and finds a man named Ismet. He asked Rayhan to work with him tomorrow. Amir gets jealous and tries to sneak the flowers away, but when he turns around, he bumps into Rayhan. Amir can only explain that he wanted to take the flowers outside to get some sun. But where's the sun at night? Amir knew his excuse was too bad, so he put the flowers back. Rayhan said that she had an appointment to work tomorrow. Of course Amir knew it was Ismet. He wanted Rayhan not to go, but he didn't know how to stop her, so he left the room in an aggravated state. In fact, this Ismet is a woman who is a member of a charitable foundation. Because Rayhan had selflessly helped the homeless girl Bella, the charity foundation invited Rayhan to join them. They usually do what they can to help widows and orphans. Lindy is also a member of the foundation. When she found out that Rayhan had joined the foundation, she became jealous and angry. 
She couldn't allow Rayhan to be equal to her, so she decided to make a big donation to the foundation to raise her status. But she couldn't come up with that kind of money at the moment. So Lindy stole her family's jewelry and took it to a loan shark to get the money. But Lindy didn't know that her vanity almost got her killed. The next day, Rayhan was going to work with his mat. Amir couldn't take it anymore and warned Rayhan to watch her behavior. Even though their marriage is fake, Rayhan is still his wife in name only. Rayhan doesn't understand why her husband is so mad and angry at her all of a sudden. Just as Amir is about to leave in anger, he opens the door and meets Ismet. Ismet had come to pick up Rayhan for her volunteer work today. When Amir realizes that Ismet is a woman, he thinks that he has misunderstood Rayhan again, and he scolds himself for being an idiot. Just when Amir decides to go to Rayhan to apologize, Hey Mitsana, when Nana realized that he was going to see Rayhan, she asked him not to go, but he didn't want to talk to her. Anna lost her temper and cried so hard that her makeup broke off. She vowed to win Amir back. When Amir found Rayhan, he didn't say a word but just worked silently. Like a child who made a mistake, Rayhan saw how serious he was and brought him a glass of orange juice. Amir was as happy as a silly boy, and after that he worked even harder. Suddenly Rayhan slipped and fell into Amir's arms. The atmosphere became ambiguous as they looked at each other. At first Rayhan stares blankly at Amir, but when she realizes that she's fallen into her husband's arms, she's a bit overwhelmed. Amir then gently wipes the paint off her face. On the other hand, Tycoon has noticed the jewelry is missing and asks his wife what happened. Lindy explains that the jewelry was sent to the store for cleaning. Tycoon wasn't convinced by this answer, which made Lindy realize that she had to get the jewelry back as soon as possible. So the next day, she embezzled money from the company and took it with her to get the jewelry back. Rayhan saw Lindy leaving the house in a panic and followed Lindy because she felt uncertain. When Lindy handed over the money to redeem the jewelry, she was stopped by Sam. Sam said she needed to pay twice the ransom before she could take the jewelry. Lindy realized that she had been tricked, and since she had to get the jewels back now, she stole them when he wasn't looking, but she was soon caught by the loan sharks. They were ready to teach Lindy a lesson. Rayhan, who has just arrived, sees this and calls Amir, but when she tried to call the police again, she was spotted by Sam. And Lindy didn't realize the seriousness of the situation. She said she paid twice the ransom just to get them to leave her alone. Sam slaps her to the ground when she hears this, which scares Lindy. But when she saw Rayhan, she got all condescending again. She said, are you happy to see me like this? I'm like this because of you. You scourge. Rayhan didn't want to argue with Lindy. She just said that she had informed Amir and was sure that he would come to the rescue soon. Lindy suddenly became agitated when she heard that her son was coming because she didn't want him to see her in such a state. Lindy rushes to Sam and says that her husband is a plutocrat. So if they let her go, they can't get as much money as they want. Sam ignored her and reported her identity to the boss. Worried that he would be caught in the crossfire, the boss decided to quietly eliminate the two women. When Amir arrived, Sam was digging a hole to bury them. Amir took the opportunity to sneak up on the boss and threatened Sam to release Rayon and Lindy. However, as soon as Sam releases the women, the boss suddenly attacks and fights with Amir. Amir told the women to run, but he was caught by Sam. The boss chases after Rayon and Lindy. They were forced to the edge of a broken building by the boss, and if they took another step forward, they would fall to their deaths. Lindy begged him to let her go, but the boss pushed the two women down without mercy. Amir finally got rid of Sam and came over and knocked out the boss. When he looked downstairs again, he saw his wife and his mother clinging to the wall. At any moment, they might not be able to hold on and fall off the building. Who should Amir say first? When his mother and his wife fell at the same time, who should he say first? It's an agonizing experience for Amir. His mother was screaming at the top of her lungs for him to save herself first, but his wife told him to save his mom first. Amir could only pull his mom up first, but his wife was about to fall from the building. Amir immediately grabbed Rayon, who had already lost her strength. His mom, however, did nothing. After he tried his best to save Rayon, she rolled her eyes and fainted. Amir knew that he had wronged his wife. When they got home, he looked at Rayon's injured hand and felt so guilty. He didn't know how to face Rayhan. Rayhan said that not only did she not blame him, but she understood his choice. Amir is shocked because he didn't expect Rayhan to say that. But Lindy is not so lucky. Tycoon is furious when he realizes what she has done. He loudly reprimands Lindy for almost harming his daughter Amal. He never thought his wife was such a despicable woman. Tycoon couldn't tolerate Lindy's damaging behavior and immediately said he wanted to divorce Lindy. Lindy cried and begged Tycoon to give her another chance. But Tycoon's mind is made up. Lindy then approached Rayon, who thought her mother-in-law had come to pick another fight. But Lindy said she just wanted to talk to Rayon. Lindy told Rayon, You're a very kind girl. You've changed Amir a lot. You've brightened up Amir's world. 
I am very grateful for what you have done for the family, but I have not done my job as your mother-in-law. I sincerely apologize for everything I have done. If I am not around anymore, please take care of Amir and this family. Rehan instantly realized what her mother-in-law meant. When she finds Tycoon and asks him about it, she realizes that he's planning to divorce Lindy. Rehan urges Tycoon to think twice. After all, everyone makes mistakes. She asks him to give her mother-in-law another chance. Tycoon was so relieved that Rayon had said that, that he agreed to her request. The day came for Layla to go to the hospital to have her legs examined. But Layla didn't want to go. After years of treatment with no results, she had given up on her paralyzed legs. Rayon couldn't bear to see Layla give up on herself. So she encouraged her not to give up. As long as she insisted on treatment, her legs would surely recover. But Rayon's words pierced her heart. Layla instantly lost control of her emotions and yelled at her to leave immediately and that she never wanted to see Rayhan again. Amir hears the commotion and rushes over to comfort his sister. Amir then blames Rayhan for being too a fool and that she shouldn't have forced Layla to do what she couldn't do. However, this time Lindy said something nice about Rayhan for the first time in her life. She tells Amir, you should be nicer to your wife. She's doing this for your sister's sake. Anna is shocked to hear this. She doesn't understand how Lindy has become a kind woman today. Layla left a letter and ran away from home, saying she didn't want to be a burden to her family. When Rayhan saw the letter, she was full of remorse. She thought it was all because of her stubbornness that Layla left home. When Amir reads the letter, he gets angry and says, My sister has left home because of you. Are you happy now? Rayhan didn't argue but went with Amir to look for Layla. But they didn't find anything for a day. When they returned home disappointed, the family was even more worried about Layla. They couldn't imagine how a girl with a disability could live on the outside. Layla was in a wheelchair in the middle of the road because of her disability. Luckily, someone saved her in the nick of time. Meanwhile, Amir blamed his wife for his sister's disappearance. Layla wouldn't have run away if she hadn't forced her to get her legs treated. Luckily, when Layla came home in the evening, the family was happy to see her safe and sound. Amir warned his wife not to go near his sister. She had no choice but to stand in the doorway and look at the sleeping Layla and pray that she would be alright. But then she has nightmares late at night because of the stress she's under. Amir blames himself for her terror. He told his wife not to be afraid and said he would stay by her bedside tonight. The next day when Rayon was about to leave the house, her mother-in-law told her to be safe. I sees this and is angry and jealous, not convinced why everyone has to be nice to her. So she excuses herself and offers to give Rayhan a ride. The housekeeper watched as Rayhan got into Anna's car. The more Anna thought about it, the angrier she got. She couldn't control her emotions. She pressed the gas and accelerated. Rayhan told her to slow down, but when she heard that, she drove faster and faster. After seeing Rayhan's fear, she increased the speed to 140 km per hour. On the other hand, Layla, who had just woken up from her nap, cried with excitement because her toes, which had been paralyzed since childhood, could move. She excitedly shared this joy with her brother and asked him to go and tell her sister-in-law the good news right away. But just as Amir reaches the kitchen, he receives a call from his secretary saying that Anna has been involved in a serious traffic accident. The housekeeper is shocked to hear this because she saw Rayhan going out in Anna's car today. Amir's eyes instantly turned red when he heard that and he turned around and rushed to the hospital. When he arrived at the hospital, he realized that down scenes of people were killed or injured in the accident. Since there was no record of Rayhan at this hospital, he rushed to another one, but here too, there was no record of Rayhan. Only an unidentified patient in surgery. Amir and his friend waited outside the operating room for the body of the victim. Looking at the burned body, Amir didn't have the courage to continue to identify who it was. Luckily, his friends soon realized that the victim was not Rayhan. But Amir was just relieved when he got a call from the police. The police had found his wife's purse at the scene of the accident and asked him to claim it. It's a bowl from the blue for him, looking at the burnt back with a photo of him in it. This strong man can't help but break down in tears. He thought of all the harm he had done to Rayhan and couldn't forgive himself. If he can't find Rayhan, he doesn't know how he'll survive. Meanwhile, when Rayhan's father-in-law finds out the news, he bursts into tears because he regrets letting Rayhan marry his son. Lindy thinks of how she has never been nice to Rayhan since her came into the family, and it is hard for her to think about it. Layla even breaks down and cries, remembering that her sister-in-law wanted to cure her paralyzed leg, but she lost her temper with her and now she doesn't even have a chance to apologize to her. Amir, on the verge of a breakdown, had just driven home when he saw the back of the woman who was so deeply embedded in his soul. Could this time be a hallucination? If not, I'll never let you go again. He held her tightly in his arms, afraid that if he let go, she would disappear. The tears at the corners of his eyes bore witness to his excitement and love. But Rayhan thought her husband had gone mad today. 
It wasn't until her family came out to embrace her that she realized they thought she had died in a car accident. It turns out that Rayon had gotten off the car in the morning after seeing Anna driving too fast. Now Anna is the only one lying injured in the hospital. The next day, they came to visit Anna in the hospital, but Anna had lost part of her memory because of the accident. She remembered everyone but Rayhan. Amir held her hand tightly and introduced Rayhan as his wife. Anna doesn't show any sign of happiness when she hears this. Lindy senses Anna's abnormality. She smiles a little and realizes that Anna is pretending to have lost her memory. After going back, Amir, who has experienced painful feelings, decides to confess his love to Rayhan. Rayhan is at a loss for words and wants to leave. Amir wraps his arms around her and stops her. Amir then extends his hand to Rayhan and says he will treat her well from now on. Rayhan suddenly remembers that she also gave her hand to Amir on her wedding night. But in return, Amir misunderstood and blamed her again and again. Rayhan retracted her hand out of sadness because she was afraid that she would make the same mistake again. Amir knew that he had her Rayhan too much and didn't want to force Rayhan. Later, Amir goes to pick up Anna from the hospital. Anna takes the opportunity to go to the beach for a walk, which will help her recover her memory. But all Amir could think about was Rayhan when he arrived at the beach. Anna is not ashamed to lean on Amir's shoulder. Amir dodged it immediately, which made Anna very embarrassed. Then when he wanted to go back, Anna suddenly pretended to have a splitting headache and said she couldn't go for a while. Amir was annoyed, but couldn't leave her alone. Anna took the opportunity to take a picture with him and post it on INS. When Lindy found out that Anna was with Amir, she immediately went to her daughter-in-law to expose Anna's scandalous behavior. She said Anna is a very scheming woman and will do anything to steal Amir from you. I know you care about my son, so you must hold on to him and not let Anna get away with this. Lindy's words gave Rayhan a sense of crisis. Rayhan spent the night tossing and turning in her bed. Unable to sleep, the next morning, Anna comes to ask Amir to go fishing. Amir wants to invite Rayhan to go with him, but he's afraid that Rayhan won't want to go, so he doesn't say anything. When Rayhan realizes that Amir didn't ask her to go, she thinks that Amir doesn't want to take her along. And so the two of them, with their misunderstanding of each other, one of them waits outside the house, while the other one wanders around the house. Layla reads her brother's mind and tells Rayhan that he hasn't left and is waiting for her. Rayhan finally decides to take the initiative. Anna realizes that Amir is waiting for Rayhan, and she realizes that he's not leaving. So Anna starts acting desperate again, and says she's so sad, because she can't even remember the day her mom won the award. She is so scared that she will forget Amir too. Then she pretends to be in need of comfort and leans into Amir's arms. Unfortunately, Rayhan saw them together. Rayhan thought Amir wanted her to go fishing with him, but now she seems to have been mistaken. He'd rather be alone with her worries than call him for clarification. Amir and Anna have arrived at the beach to go fishing, but Amir is distracted by his thoughts of Rayhan. Anna tries to get close to Amir even though Amir didn't even bother to talk to her. Anna didn't feel embarrassed because she had a thick skin. When she got back to his house, she even bragged in front of Rayhan that her fishing trip with Amir was really romantic and fun. If she went fishing with him a few more times, she would be able to regain the memories she lost in the accident. Rayhan got jealous and looked at Amir unconsciously, but Amir didn't give any explanation. Fortunately, her mother-in-law steps in and reminds Anna, my son is married and has a family. Whether you remember or not, you have to accept that fact. Anna couldn't argue with her, even though she was trying to play the weakling. Until Rayon left, Anna could not hold back her anger and accused Lindy why in just a few days she was favoring that poor woman. Lindy suddenly interrupted Anna and said, You can't get Amir back by pretending to have amnesia. If you want to get rid of that poor woman, you have to listen to me next. It turns out that Lindy has been acting for so many days. But Rayhan didn't realize it and was still angry with Amir. When Amir saw that she didn't want to talk to him, he pretended to be sick in bed that night. Amir said he had a cold and asked Rayhan to touch his forehead to feel his temperature. Then he said he was dizzy and asked Rayhan to make him some soup. Even though Rayhan said she didn't want to talk to him, she had a soft heart after all. When she finished making Amir's soup and was about to bring it into the room, she heard Amir talking to his friend on the phone. He looked so energetic. He didn't look like a sick person. Rayhan knew that Amir was pretending to be sick. So she told him to go to bed early, and that there would be no soup for him today. And then she left in anger. Amir scratches his beard in a hurry, before he realizes what he has done wrong. Then Amir comes out of the room, and asks Rayhan why she is angry. He says, if you're angry, because I went fishing with Anna, then I can assure you, that I was only trying to help her recover her memory. But Rayhan is so angry, that she doesn't want to say a word, when she remembers the scene where he was hugging Anna. Amir saw Rayhan's silence, and gradually he lost his patience. 
At that moment, he received a call from his company, who needed him to take care of their business abroad. And he didn't know when he'd be back. Amir wanted Rayhan to talk him out of it. Even though Rayhan doesn't want him to leave her, she can't get the words out of her mouth. Amir was so disappointed that he agreed to the company's request. The next day, Amir told his family that he was leaving the country. Lindy smiled and had an idea. After that, Lindy found Rayhan and advised her not to stop Amir from going abroad. Because Amir's going abroad would not only make the company's performance better, but also give him a better development. As a wife, she should fully support Amir's career. Rayhan was silent as she felt that her mother-in-law seemed to have a point. Lindy soon contacted Anna and asked her to buy a plane ticket to go abroad with Amir. Anna was so happy to hear this news. Of course, she wouldn't miss this great opportunity. On the other hand, Amir washed up and ready to leave for the airport, but the bathroom door was locked by Rayhan. Amir immediately realized what Rayhan was thinking she didn't want him to leave, but she was too embarrassed to say so, so she had to use this childish method to stop him. Rayhan was in a hurry like a cat on a hot team roof. She didn't know how to face Amir later. Just when she didn't know what to do, she turned around and Amir appeared behind her. There was a spare key in the bathroom. Rayhan explains that the door was broken and locked automatically, and that she had nothing to do with it. Amir doesn't say anything but just hugs Rayhan. He was mesmerized by Rayhan's adorable personality. Yo te amo. I'm a little used to calling outside your name. His sudden confession alarms Rayhan even more. The atmosphere between the two of them is gradually filled with ambiguity. But when Amir tries to kiss Rayhan, she subconsciously avoids it because she suddenly remembers that Amir once said that he would never fall in love with her. His words were like a sword to Rayhan. They had already penetrated into her heart. No matter how Amir explained that those words were just his impulsive words, she couldn't get over it. Amir was disheartened and thought that it would be better for both of us if we parted ways for a while. After coming down, Rayhan also thought that maybe she shouldn't hold on to the past. When she tries to talk to Amir, the housekeeper says he's already left for the airport. Did the two of them just miss each other? Amir is driving, but he's not going to the airport, he's going to his breastfeeding mom's house. When something is troubling him, he can only come to her house to talk about it. And Rayhan is still at home, thinking of the two different ways Amir had treated her. She didn't know whether to ask him to stay or not. Layla has been following what her brother and sister-in-law are going through. She wants Rayhan to give her brother another chance, because she is sure that her brother is in love with Rayhan. Then she tells her brother, that Rayon is secretly set at home alone and asks him to understand the vulnerability of women. On the other hand, Anna, Rayon's rival for love, has even booked a flight to go abroad with Amir. Even though Lindy is not happy with Anna's private decision, Anna goes on to irritate Rayon. She said that she was going to go abroad with Rayon's husband and told her not to worry because she would take good care of Amir. I'll be damned if Rayon was relieved to hear that. At this point, she couldn't hold back any longer and asked her driver to get a car to take her to the airport. Layla was secretly happy to see her sister-in-law in such a hurry. Soon Rayhan was on her way to the airport, desperate to stop her husband from leaving the country. She urged the driver to drive as fast as possible. Then the driver suddenly pulled down the rearview mirror. My god, when did the driver become Amir? She didn't realize why her husband was driving instead of being at the airport. Amir says he'll prove what is said wrong with his actions. Rayhan says it's not only what you said that's wrong. You're leaving the country with Anna now. To his surprise, he didn't even know about it, but is happy to see Rayhan jealous. Rayhan calmed down and realized that everything was a lie by Anna. So Amir drove Rayhan all the way to the countryside for a break. Layla told her family about it. Tycoon was happy that they were back together. Lindy's expression is a bit unusual. On the other hand, Anna was jealous and disappointed. She realized she'd been screwed all day when she found out from Lindy that Amir was with Rayhan. And she just happened to see a woman with a back like Rayhan's walking down the sidewalk. So she got out of her car and grabbed the woman and beat her up. When she realized it was too late, she hit the wrong woman. This woman was no pushover either. Anna was beaten on the ground and suffered both mental and physical blows. Luckily, the driver stopped the car and pulled her away. In the end, Anna was not only beaten, but she was also arrested by the police and locked up in the police station. So let's not do bad things. There will be karma. Something strange must have happened when the car ran out of gas in the wilderness. The couple was about to go out together to get fuel, but as they walked, her husband suddenly disappeared, with no response to Rayhan's shouts. In fact, Amir had fallen into a trap. He tried to climb up but failed several times. It was Rayhan who realized that he had fallen into the pit. Then she found a rope and rescued him, as soon as it was dark and they were lost in the mountains. Two men suddenly appeared in front of them. Amir thought it was strange for two men to appear in the mountains in the middle of the night. And Rayon said, don't we do the same thing? So they went to ask the two men about the way out of the mountain. 
Since they felt that these two men were strange, they got up and were about to leave the place. Suddenly, one of the men strangled Emir from behind with a rope. At that moment, Rayhan defended herself and hit him with a wooden stick. Seeing that there was no chance to take advantage of the situation, the man let go of Emir and ran away. After escaping the danger, Emir took Rayhan in his arms. The two of them Saturday by the fire and roasted mushrooms. Rayhan fell asleep on Emir's shoulder. The next day, as they were about to leave, Emir was attacked again by the same men from last night. But when they saw Emir's injuries and blood, they ran away in fear. Rayhan was screaming for help. Luckily, Emir woke up on his own. They went to the hospital for a checkup. Emir's body is not seriously injured, but Rayhan is jealous of the patient next to him. It seems like this is not a good place to stay. After Emir recovered from his injuries, he happily returned home with his wife. The housekeeper was genuinely happy for Rayhan because she had seen Rayhan go through so much suffering and finally get happy. She remembers when Rayhan's head was broken by her mother-in-law. Rayhan didn't reveal it, and in the end, she was forced by Emir to apologize to her mother-in-law. Rayhan also calmly lamented that she should just let it all go. However, Emir overhears their conversation. He realizes that all the things he did to her Rayhan were all his mother's schemes. He cursed his mother for being so vicious, for letting him hurt his wife over and over again. It was a shame to have such a mother. Lindy argued that she had done it all for his benefit. Emir yelled at her angrily, then you'll lose your son forever. With these angry words, he left the house alone. Lindy was so excited that she almost fainted. And when she had just regained her senses, her daughter also started accusing Lindy of disliking her as a disabled person since she was a little girl. Is she going to break up the family now? The housekeeper hurriedly pushed her wheelchair back to her room. At this moment, Tycoon came over and asked what happened. Lindy excused herself from her husband by saying she had to take her medication. Tycoon saw his son's agitated reaction and thought it wasn't that simple. Anna, who was beaten up last night, met this woman in the police station. The next day, her mother bailed Anna out of the police station. She was furious at her daughter for losing her mind and becoming a jealous woman. Anna promised her mother that she would change and stay away from Amir. However, after her mother left, she paid for the woman's release from the police station and asked her, I have a deal here, do you want to take it? But his wife still urges him to forgive his mother, which makes Amir feel very guilty. He decides to give Rayon a new home away from his mother. So he asked his secretary to find a new house for him, but the secretary immediately tells Anna about it. Anna went crazy with jealousy when she found out about it. She had an evil idea in a flash. She came to the police station to bail out the female prisoner. Then she took Amir's picture and made some kind of deal with her. Then Anna called Lindy and told her that Amir was going to move out so that Rayhan wouldn't be bullied. She asked Lindy to cooperate with her to frame Rayhan again. However, Lindy refused because Lindy had just been called into her husband's office for questioning. She thought he didn't know anything about her bullying Rayhan, so she said she just had a misunderstanding with her son and left. Little did she know that her husband was giving her a chance, but she didn't appreciate it. When she came out of the room, she was still complaining that Rayhan had caused her to break up with her family. Anna sends her a text message threatening to tell her husband all the dirty things she has done if she doesn't help her. Lindy didn't realize that all her plans were ruined, so she did what Anna said. Layla is crying in her room because she thinks that her brother will never come home again and that it is her mother who broke up the family. Rayhan reassures her that Amir will come back. Meanwhile, Amir has already started decorating the new house. He has fantasized about Rayhan's reaction when she comes to the new house. He would take Rayhan to live in the new house and plan to have several children with her here. Rayhan would love this place very much. Just when he was thinking of the happiest moment, a phone call woke him up. It was Anna asking for Amir's location. After confirming that Amir was in his new house, Anna was about to do something bad again. Amir doesn't know that he's been double-crossed. Then Anna called Lindy and told her to lure Rayhan to Amir's new house on time. So Lindy plays all pathetic and innocent in front of Rayhan. She hoped Rayhan would go to an address she gave her to bring Amir back. On the other hand, a woman came to the door of Emir's new house and said that her car broke down on the side of the road and she wanted to use the restroom. Emir let her in without thinking twice. This woman is the same female inmate that Anna bailed out of the police station. Rayon was already on her way to the address given by her mother-in-law. When Rayon arrived at the door, the woman was waiting for her behind the door. As she opened the door, Rayon looked surprised. Then she said, this man is crazy. He already has a wife and still wants to have sex with me. After she left, Rayon didn't really understand what she was saying but slowly walked into the new home. When she got to the bedroom on the second floor, she went in and saw the scene of an orgy. A messy room full of clutter, a goblet with lipstick on it and lipstick on his shirt, all told Rayon what had just happened here. When he woke up, Amir tried to explain what had happened, but he couldn't remember a thing about what happened tonight. 
Amir asks Rayhan to believe him, but as Rayhan took one look at the red lipstick on the wine glass, she couldn't calm down anymore and started smashing everything in the room in a frenzy. Their wedding photo was thrown to the floor and the glass frame shattered. This was the moment when all her feelings for him broke down and Rayon slammed the door in anger. As she walked out of the house, the woman who had caused this tragedy in her car smiled in triumph. She immediately called Anna to report the good news. It turned out to be Anna's scheme. Anna let her enter Amir's house under the pretext that her cell phone had run out of battery and she wanted to ask him to borrow a way phone. She used the opportunity to drug Amir into a coma and then she made his room look like a mess. She even took pictures of her and Amir looking very intimate. Nothing actually happened between her and him, but she managed to ruin Amir's relationship with Rayhan. Anna then rushed to inform Lindy of their breakup and said that our plan had worked. Lindy rushes to get rid of her and says, you did all this. Don't involve me in this. Lindy was afraid that Tycoon would find out that she had hurt her daughter Amal. Unfortunately for her, Tycoon heard everything she said. Tycoon immediately found the maid. After much questioning, the maid confessed what Lindy had done to Rayhan. Tycoon didn't realize how vicious his wife was. He would never allow anyone to destroy his family, let alone hurt them. And Anna couldn't wait to get to Lindy's house and be ready to see something exciting unfold. But she didn't see Amir and Rayhan fighting or ignoring each other. Instead, Rayhan asked Amir what he wanted to eat tonight. Anna couldn't understand how the two of them could have such a harmonious relationship after what they'd been through. She could only leave in anger. Meanwhile, Amir thought Rayhan had forgiven him. But Rayon is only doing this for the promise she made to her father-in-law that she will maintain her marriage with Amir, no matter what happens. On the other hand, a frustrated Anna is still unrepentant. She finds the woman again and asks her to send Tycoon the intimate photos she took with Amir last night and pays her a large sum of money. Tycoon soon received the photo, the photo that shattered Tycoon's faith. The family harmony he was trying to maintain was being trampled on by his son. At this moment, Tycoon regretted that he had allowed Rayon to marry his son. In the evening, Tycoon gathered all the family members in the living room. He said with great disappointment, I believe that family harmony needs to be maintained by all, and that family members should respect each other and take care of each other. But today I realized that there have been people who would do anything to destroy our family and hurt our family members. Lindy sheepishly asked him what he meant by that. Then Tycoon took out a document, which was Lindy's revised will. Lindy used it to frame Rayhan for marrying Amir for money. Amir couldn't believe how mean his mother was. Tycoon then said to his wife, As a mother, you're trying to destroy your family. I'm disappointed in you. Then Tycoon pulled out a divorce decree. He wanted Lindy to get out of the house without any money. Amir tried to talk his father out of it. Tycoon replied, You have no right to talk. You're the one who's disappointed me the most. Then Tycoon shows him a picture of him with another woman. Amir explains that it's all a lie. Someone must have deliberately framed me. But Tycoon cut him off. In his opinion, Amir's explanation was just a trick. Then Tycoon finally revealed his secret. His family was not only shocked by the news, they started to shed tears. Tycoon said to his son, Rayhan married you to fulfill my last wish. I made Rayhan promise to take care of you no matter what and to lead you to good things. And now I don't think you're good enough for her. Amir rushed to say, now Rayhan and I are truly in love. I love Rayhan very much. And she loves me. But Tycoon interrupted him again and said that now he will not bind Rayhan in any way and she can end the marriage anytime she chooses. Amir looks at Rayhan with tears in his eyes, but Rayhan was already too heartbroken to look at him. All the good memories of her time with him came flooding back to her. How happy she was then and how sad she is now. Then Rayhan slowly took off the ring she was wearing to announce the end of her marriage with Amir. But three months later, she chose to end the marriage and move to this shabby house with her adopted girl. The two of them lived with the landlord demanding mend every day. But she didn't realize that just a few days after she left her husband, her love rival, Anna, moved in with Amir under the guise of taking care of his sister. Her mother-in-law was in a bad way, because since Tycoon kicked her out of the house, she went from being a rich wife to a beggar. She's been living on a poor diet all day long, which is pretty miserable. And Amir, since he divorced Rayhan, he's been on a self-indulgent streak. He was either racing on the road or getting into fights. Amir's uncle yelled at him, look what you've become since Rayhan left. If you can't let her go, get her back. Then his uncle gave Amir Rayhan's address. Amir came to Rayhan's place after a night of struggle. Rayhan's heart was in turmoil when she saw Amir arrive. They both miss each other, but start arguing the moment they meet. Rayhan told Amir to get out of her life. Amir, on the other hand, has the audacity to explain that he's here to see Bella. He even had the audacity to stay at her house for a meal. After the meal, Rayhan asked him, You've already visited Bella, why are you still here? Bella saw that it was not good and left. Amir said, I'm taking Bella out of here. I can't let my child live in such a shitty house. 
Rayhan's temper got the better of him, and she yelled, You haven't come to see Bella for months, and you want to take her away as soon as you get here. Don't you think it's ridiculous? And it's all because you betrayed our marriage that we are like this. I won't let Bella live with someone who doesn't respect marriage. Amir Khan only blurred out that he was framed when he was being hit. Instead, he accused Rayhan of disrespecting marriage by agreeing to marry him, whom she had never met, because of a promise. This promise was something that Rayhan had always believed in, so she would never allow him to defame it like that. Rayhan was so angry that she slapped Amir, but the slap didn't calm Amir down at all. He couldn't understand why Rayhan just didn't want to believe him, as Amir got angrier and angrier. The car got faster and faster. On the other hand, Amir's uncle found Rayhan and showed her a file. He said that the woman Amir slept with in the same bed was a fraudster with many priors. It's obvious Amir was set up. He wasn't sure who was behind it, but he was sure that Amir had betrayed Rayhan. Rayhan reads it and instantly regrets it. She blamed herself for not trusting Amir and for divorcing him on such an impulse. Just when Rayhan was full of remorse, his uncle received a call from the hospital saying that Amir had been in a serious car accident. Soon Rayhan and his uncle rushed to the hospital, where Amir was still in critical condition. Rayhan could only pray for Amir's safety. Among Amir's personal belongings left behind at the scene of the accident was a handkerchief embroidered with Rayhan's name. Rayhan was devastated because she realized how much Amir loved her. Perhaps her prayers worked and Amir's surgery was a success. Rayhan held his hand and tears fell down her face again. She stayed by Amir's side all night and he finally woke up. Rayhan was ecstatic and cried and apologized. I misunderstood you. You didn't betray our marriage. I know someone set you up. Her words were overheard by Anna who came to the hospital. This made Anna resent her even more and she made up her mind that she would never let Rayhan come near Amir again. As he lies on the hospital bed, he suddenly remembers that Rayhan slapped him earlier and turns his back on Rayhan. Rayhan knows how it feels to be misunderstood. She wants to make up for what she did to Amir with her actions. That's when Tycoon comes to the hospital room. He also knows that he misunderstood his son and apologizes to Amir sincerely. The gap between father and son disappears in this moment. Tycoon then asks Rayhan to take care of Amir. But this scene makes Anna jealous. She called the hospital security and kicked Rayhan out of the hospital in Amir's name. Rayhan thought that Amir didn't want to see her. What she didn't know was that Amir was looking for her desperately. Anna lied that I didn't see Rayhan. Maybe she went home when she saw that you were fine. And his lie succeeded in making Amir think that Rayhan didn't care about him at all. A few days later, Amir was discharged from the hospital and when he opened the door, he saw Rayhan. Anna comes close to him intentionally to make his ex-wife see him get jealous. Since Rayhan had divorced him due to a misunderstanding, Rayhan wants to make up for her mistake by taking action. But Amir doesn't want to accept her kindness and even knocks over the glass of water she brings him. Rayhan doesn't get angry because she is determined that no matter what he does, she will never let go of his hand again. Rayhan even offered to feed Amir afterward. She thoughtfully helped Amir up to sit and even put a scarf on him. He was surprised and wondered why Rayhan was being so nice to him. This scene made Anna so jealous that she rushed away, not wanting to see such a close couple. That night Amir develops a fever and Rayhan goes out of her way to take care of him all night long. She sleeps right next to him even after she's exhausted. When Amir woke up and found Rayhan lying next to him, his eyes were full of tenderness and love again. Then he couldn't help but ask her, why didn't you take care of me when I was in the hospital and now you're pretending to care for me? Rayon was a bit puzzled because he was the one who had sent someone to kick her out of the hospital before. But Amir didn't even know that happened. He doesn't think Rayon is pretending to be innocent. He realizes that maybe he really misunderstood Rayon. Anna, who was standing outside the door peeping in, felt very nervous. She knew she couldn't let Rayon stay here anymore. The next day, Anna provoked Rayhan and shouted, Amir doesn't want to see you. Why are you staying here? Rayhan doesn't want to argue with her and says, Amir loves me. Then she left in style, leaving Anna alone and mad. This simple statement made Anna so angry that she almost destroyed the kitchen. She vowed to make Rayhan pay, so she found Layla and started the show. Anna cried, your brother got hurt because of Rayhan. Once she selfishly abandoned your brother, now she comes back pretending to care for your brother. Does she have to kill your brother to be happy? To my surprise, Layla actually believed Anna's lies and promised that she would get rid of Rayhan. The next day, Layla was screaming for Rayhan to leave. She blamed Rayhan for her brother's injuries and her mother's eviction from the house. Rayhan couldn't argue with her. She just had to take it all in her stride. The housekeeper tried to stop Layla, but Anna stopped her. Luckily, Tycoon came back in time to calm his daughter down. However, Anna took her away in a pretentious manner. Rayhan felt that Layla was not the same as before. She approached the housekeeper and asked what had changed with Leia. The housekeeper said that since Anna had moved in to look after Leia, 
she had become very close to her, but Layla had become more and more irritable and was eating very little. Rayhan had a keen sense that Anna had something to do with Layla's changes. In fact, her instincts were right. Anna had secretly switched the medication for Layla's legs in order to stay here longer. If Layla took the wrong medication, she would never recover, and too much of it could damage her nerves. Rayhan was worried and went to Layla's room, but found her sweating like she was in pain. Rayhan wakes her up and asks her what has happened to her. Anna was very nervous and rushed in to ask Rayhan to leave. Anna knew that if Rayhan stayed here any longer, her secret would be discovered sooner or later. So she came up with an even more crazy idea. This time, she was sure that she could get rid of Rayhan once and for all. Anna first told Layla, Rayhan thinks you're mentally ill and wants to send you to a mental hospital. Layla was so scared that she told her brother. Amir chose to believe Rayhan this time and assured his sister that Rayhan would never do such a thing. But the next day, a group of doctors came to her house and insisted on taking Layla away. Layla screams that she's not a psychopath. Amir rushed out and pushed the doctors away, asking what they wanted. The doctors said they had received a call from the family to take the patient back to the hospital for treatment. When Amir asked who said that, the doctor said Rayhan's name. Everyone looked at Rayhan in surprise, but Rayhan didn't know anything about it. Obviously, it was Anna's doing again. <laughs> Rayhan knows she's being wrongly accused and wants Amir to believe her. Amir calmed down and thought that there was no reason for her to do it. So he called the hospital to check. But it turns out that there's no record of Rayhan's call from the hospital. Amir knew he misunderstood Rayhan again. So he found her and apologized. She didn't take it seriously. She was only concerned about Layla's health. Rayhan realized that all this had something to do with Anna. So she started to pay attention to Anna's every move. That day, she saw Anna buying medicine from a strange man. Rayhan finally realized that Layla's current condition must be due to a problem with her medication. So Rayhan secretly took one of Layla's pills and went to the pharmacist to have it tested. The pharmacist said that it was a psychotropic drug and that taking it for a long time would not only damage the nerves but also make the user dependent. So this drug had been banned a long time ago. Rayhan realized the gravity of the situation. When she returned home, she saw Anna trying to give Layla some pills. Rayhan rushed forward and grabbed the medicine. Then she dragged Anna to the kitchen. Rayhan scolded her for poisoning Layla, but Anna immediately grabbed the medicine back and poured it into the sink. Then she immediately ran the water to wash it away. Anna said provocatively, now the only evidence is gone. What can you do to me? Rayhan realized that Anna had no shame. She was so angry that she slapped Anna directly. Anna was dumbfounded on the spot because she never thought Rayhan would dare to hit her. Coincidentally, Amir saw this beating, but her family thinks it's just a misunderstanding. Her sister-in-law even accused Rayon of spreading rumors. After seeing the bruises on Anna's arm, Layla offered to take a blood test to prove Anna's innocence. But this made Anna feel that she was in trouble. She advised Rayhan to leave the matter alone. But Rayhan wouldn't allow her to be slandered. Then Amir took Layla to the hospital for a blood test. Anna was going crazy. She wanted to call for help but didn't know who to call. Tycoon saw her anxiety and thought she was desperate to prove her innocence. So he went up to her and reassured her not to worry. A little while later, Amir returned with Layla, and her blood test report will not be out until tomorrow. Her family's distrust makes Rayhan feel aggrieved. Amir is too embarrassed to comfort her, so he asks the housekeeper to bring her a cloak. The next day, while the family is having breakfast, the maid delivers the hospital report. As Amir opened the report, the family's eyes focused on him. Anna, on the other hand, looked calm as she already knew that the test results were normal. Rayhan doesn't think it's possible, so Amir lets her read it herself. In fact, Anna bribed the doctor last night to change the test results. Rayhan realizes that Anna is behind all this and leaves in anger. Anna pretended to be upset about being wrongly accused and followed her out the door. Then she started to be sarcastic and said to Rayhan, How can you be compared to me, you peasant woman? Rayhan said, I don't know how you did it, but you can't fool me. Lindy is expecting her son to see the letter she wrote to report Anna's despicable deeds. Just as Amir is about to open the letter, Anna arrives. So Amir had to put the letter aside. Although Rayhan was very worried about Layla's health, there was nothing she could do. So she began to pray every day at home. And the results of her prayers were remarkable. That day she had just finished praying when she read Lindy's letter. When she read about all the bad things Anna had done since she met her. She couldn't believe it. She thought about showing the letter to Amir. But she didn't think he would believe her. Then Amir appeared in front of her a few minutes later. Amir's attitude towards her made her glad that she hadn't just blurted it out. On the other hand, 
Rayham was worried that it was Innistrick, so she goes to her study and pulls out Lindy's letters to compare the handwriting. After comparing the handwriting, she realizes that the letter is really written by Lindy. Amir saw it and asked Rayhan what she was doing here. Rayhan doesn't want to talk to him until she has all the evidence. So she finds the housekeeper and asks for Lindy's address. When the housekeeper realized the maid was eavesdropping, she wrote the address down for Rayhan. At that moment, Lindy was eating bread in the house. When she heard the doorbell, she opened the door and saw her daughter-in-law. At first, she thought Rayhan had come to mock her. So she opened the door to show her how miserable she was. But then Rayhan pulled out a letter she'd written and told her all about Anna poisoning her daughter. So Lindy asked Rayhan to set up a meeting between her and her son for tomorrow morning. At that time, she would tell Amir herself about all the conspiracies Anna had done. After Rayhan left, Lindy wasn't worried about her daughter's safety, but was excited about her return to the mansion. In fact, Lindy was so determined to get back at Anna that she even called Anna and deliberately provoked her by saying that she would soon let her son know about Anna's sins. Amir will hate Anna if he knows the truth, and then it will be a fool's errand for her to marry Amir. Anna asked Lindy anxiously why she was doing this. Lindy did it to get back at Anna for not helping her get back into the rich family. Then she hung up the phone in triumph and couldn't have been happier. The next day, Rehan brought Lindy to Amir on time. But Lindy kept chatting with him and didn't get to the point until he left. Rayhan doesn't understand why she doesn't reveal Anna's guilt. Lindy suddenly plays dumb, which makes Rayhan realize something's wrong. She rushes back to look for the letter and realizes that it has disappeared. Rayhan guessed that Lindy must be working with Anna again. Of course, she was right. Anna had no choice but to bring Layla to Lindy. She said, your daughter took my medicine and now she listens to me very well. So as long as you keep your mouth shut and don't say anything, I'll let your daughter beg her uncle, and he'll definitely agree to let you go back to the mansion. Lindy didn't even hesitate to say yes when she heard that she could return to her high life. Sadly, she didn't care about her daughter's condition at all. Lindy then warns Anna that now that I'm done, it's your turn and if you go back on your word, I'll put you in jail. On the other hand, Rayhan also realizes that there is no way she can get Amir back with Anna keeping an eye on her. She had to find a way to be alone with Amir. So Rayhan reached out to Anna and said, You've won, I can't beat you, I'm moving back to the village. Amir belongs to you now, that she packed her bags and left the mission. Anna was overjoyed, and immediately booked a plane ticket to travel abroad with Amir. But the next morning, Amir was taken away by his best friend Jack. Jack drove him to the cabin where they used to play together when they were kids. Unbeknownst to him, Amir got out of the car and met Rayhan. He turned around to leave, but he didn't realize that Jack was already driving away. Amir tries to call the driver again, but Rayhan snatches his cell phone. She confessed that she told Jack to do it. Amir said no matter what she did, he would never forgive her for abandoning him. Although Amir says he'll ignore her, his stomach growls with hunger. Rayhan peels potatoes for dinner, but Amir has to fish for his own food. Soon Rayhan has a bunch of food ray, but Amir hasn't caught a single fish. Rayhan kindly asks Amir if he wants to eat with her, but Amir shows her that he won't eat a bite of her food, even if he starves to death. Rayhan could see that he was trying to save face, so she excused herself and went back to the cabin to ask him to take care of the food. As soon as Rayhan left, Amir couldn't sit still any longer. He looked around to make sure Rayhan wasn't there and immediately rushed up to eat. All this was seen by Rayhan. Rayhan thought that this man was too cute. Amir ate and drank his fuel and then pretended to fish. When Rayhan came back, he kept looking at her in fear that she would find out that he was stealing food. Rayhan couldn't help but laugh at the messy food, but she didn't tell Amir what he was doing. After that, Rayhan finally reveals her feelings for him. She said, when I saw a woman coming out of your house, and you were lying on the bed in your clothes, it wasn't surprising that I misunderstood you. But when I realized that I had misunderstood you, I regretted divorcing you. I know I've always been in love with you. Son. Tam buradaydım. Rayhan's words touched him deeply. In fact, he has always been in love with Rayhan, but he doesn't want to admit it. And Anna found out from Tycoon that Amir was dating Rayhan at the cabin. She was devastated. The trip she had planned for the two of them was a joke. She can't have Rayhan near Amir. Anna drove all night to get to the cabin, cursing Rayhan the whole way. Meanwhile, Rayhan and Amir are counseling up by the campfire, chatting away. They were looking up at the stars and remembering the good old days when they were so happy and in harmony. Amir looks at her with great tenderness. Their feelings for each other are growing rapidly. As the night got colder, they went back to the house to rest. Anna drove all the way to the cabin, but what she saw in front of her was too much to ignore Amir and Rayhan were sleeping in the same bed. Anna's initial anger was overwhelming, 
And then it turned into resentment. She had a crazy idea that since she couldn't have this man, she would destroy everything. Anna poured gasoline all over the cabin and lit a fire without hesitation. The thought that the man she loved was sleeping with his wife was too much for her to quench her jealousy. When she came to her senses, she was afraid, but now the fire was too big for her to put out alone. She had to drive away from the crime scene. Amir woke up choking on the smoke as the fire got bigger and bigger. It tries to wake up Rayhan, but she's already unconscious. Amir picks her up and rushes out of the cabin, before he is able to extinguish the fire. Rayhan is still in a state of shock after surviving the fire. Amir hugs her tightly. Together they experienced life and death, and grew to love each other more and more. But Anna was very nervous, because she was afraid that Amir was really dead, and that her secret of setting the fire would be discovered. After hesitating for a long time, she decides to call Amir and Rayhan answers the phone. Anna is relieved when she realizes that Rayhan's tone is not unusual. It seems that Amir has managed to get out of the fire, and the important thing is that they don't suspect that she started it. Jack came to the cabin to take them both home. When they got back, Amir couldn't hide his love for Rayhan anymore. He was always pestering Rayhan to cook for him, and he was always looking at Rayhan secretly. Amir was completely in love and couldn't help himself. The next morning, he woke up Rayhan gently and told her that he had a surprise for her. Rayhan is full of anticipation. After all the torture she's endured, it's finally the end of her suffering. Amir had prepared a party for her. Bella pushes Rayhan on a swing. Amir comes over and gestures that he should take over this task. With the help of him, he gently pushed Rayhan to continue swinging without Rayhan noticing that something was wrong. Tycoon was pleased to see this. He couldn't be happier to see the two of them so in love. Amir gently hugged Rayhan around the waist, and she was so flattered that she met his eyes. The atmosphere was so ambiguous. Amir wanted to confess his love, but Layla suddenly appeared and interrupted his plan. Don't worry, Tycoon speaks for him. Tycoon said, there was once a loving couple who came together because of my last wish, but they were separated because of some misunderstanding. Now fate has brought them together again. This time I hope they can hold each other's hands tightly and put rings on each other's hands again. Amir and Rayhan walked up to him with happy smiles on their faces. Tycoon put the rings on both of them. From this moment on, they were officially remarried. Everyone in the room gave them their blessings and applause. Except Layla, who felt bad. Afterwards, Layla went to the side and spilled juice on herself. Rayhan rushed to help Layla clean up the spill. This touched Layla's heart because it was something Anna had never done for her before. Her prejudice against Rayhan disappeared in an instant. Amir smiled even more when he saw this. That night, Rayhan fell into Amir's arms and slept happily. Amir became a man who couldn't live without her. He had to kiss her every day before he left for work, which made Rayhan shy. Amir just Saturday down at the office and started thinking about his wife. So he calls Rayhan and tells her he has a surprise for her. Rayhan follows Amir's lead and finds a bouquet of flowers, in a box with a pearl necklace and a wedding photo of the two of them. All of this made Rayhan feel very happy. Amir also prepared a white dress for her. Rayhan looked beautiful in the white dress. And while some were happy, others were sad. Tycoon approached Anna's mother and ended that it was time for her to take her daughter home. But Anna refused and said she'd stay here for a few more days. Anna also started to resent Tycoon because she worked so hard for him to take care of his daughter. But as soon as Rayhan came back, he wanted to kick her out. Anna curses Tycoon for being a stubborn old man. Undeterred, she goes to Lindy with an idea. Lindy came up with a wicked idea that since she couldn't get rid of Rayhan, she should just disappear. She asked Anna to give her a sum of money, and then she found a very sick old man. She promises the old man that if he does one thing for her, she will pay him a handsome sum of money, enough to feed his children for the rest of their lives. Amir was taking Rayhan out on a date when he realized he'd forgotten his cell phone, so he told her to wait in the car. As soon as he left, Rayhan realized that Lindy was coming, so she got out of the car and asked Lindy what she was doing here. Lindy purposely drew her attention to the fact that she was looking for Tycoon. At that moment, the old man was already walking toward them with a gun in his hand. The old man raised his gun tremblingly and aimed it at Rayhan. Rayhan! Amir! Lindy didn't realize that she'd hired a killer to kill her daughter-in-law, but that she'd been shot herself. Her son wanted to go after the killer, but her daughter-in-law stopped him. After all, the most important thing is to get Lindy to the hospital first. But after arriving at the hospital, Lindy asked them to forgive her before she would operate. Due to the urgency of the situation, they have no choice but to agree. Amir found a picture of him as a child in his mother's bag. That's when he realized how much his mother loved him. He regretted kicking his mother out of the mansion, but he didn't know it was all Lindy's plan. Lindy's skin was only scratched by the bullet. She was fine. Amir breathed a long sigh of relief. Tycoon, however, since there was more to it than Mistai, he told his son to stay and take care of his wife and left. 
Lindy took the opportunity to play the poor girl in front of her son and said she didn't want to be alone in the hospital. If she could, she'd like to go back to the mansion to see her daughter. Amir hesitantly agreed to his mother's request. He reassured her that she should stay in the hospital for a few days and that he would take her home when he was sure she was well enough. Then Anna came to the hospital in a rage and asked Lindy, Why are you lying here and not Rehan? Lindy just smiled a little because killing her daughter-in-law was just an excuse to Anna and she was the one who told the old man to shoot her. Lindy is trying to use Amir's sympathy to help her get back to the mansion. Soon Lindy is back at the mansion, just like she wanted. Anna says now that you've gotten your wish. How are you going to help me with Rehan? She doesn't want to put up with Amir and Rehan's love affair for even a moment longer. Lindy reassured her and said, Soon I will show Rayon who is in charge in this house. But Lindy didn't know that Tycoon had gone through the police to find the old man who shot her. The old man never said a word. He was terminally ill and had only a few days left and wanted to leave more money for his children. Tycoon knew that interrogation was useless against this kind of man. So he said, I don't care how much money anyone pays you, as long as you can tell me who ordered you to shoot her. I'll pay you double. That worked. The old man told the truth about what Lindy had done in order to leave more money for his children. Tycoon was furious. He never thought Lindy would do such a terrible thing. When he got back, Tycoon immediately found Lindy and warned her to get out of his house immediately. She's a vicious woman who doesn't deserve to be here. Lindy tried to argue that all she was doing was going home to take care of her daughter. Tycoon just blew Lindy's cover. You came back by any means necessary to live a high society life. You never had children in your heart. Lindy broke down and cried when her lies were exposed. She begged Tycoon to give her another chance. But Tycoon was already disappointed in her. He was ready to go out and tell everyone what Lindy had done. Lindy had just returned to the family, and she couldn't bear the thought of going from being the wife of a wealthy family to a commoner again. At this moment, Lindy has completely lost her humanity. Like a demon, she picked up the metal ornament on the table and smashed it on Tycoon without hesitation. Tycoon fell to the ground. Bleeding profusely, the family heard the commotion and rushed to the study. Lindy puts the metal object back in its place and sneaks out the back door. She acted as if nothing had happened. A few minutes later, she saw her family gathered around Tycoon, playing the victim. Looking devastated, the family assumed Tycoon had suffered a seizure and fell and rushed him to the hospital. Luckily, Tycoon's life was not in danger. The next day, Tycoon finally woke up. When the housekeeper told Lindy the good news, she was shocked. She didn't think Tycoon was still alive, and she knew she would be ruined for good, but she was still trying to make a go of it. So she ransacked the safe for cash and jewelry, and then she was ready to run. But she ran into Amir, who had come home to help Rehan with his luggage. Amir thought his mother was in a hurry to see his father, so he asked Lindy to go with him to the hospital. Lindy had no choice but to follow Amir to the hospital. The doctor gave them some bad news. Although Tycoon woke up, due to the nerve damage caused by the blow to his brain, he was unable to speak or move for the time being, and his physical state was like an awake vegetable. Lindy was relieved when she heard this, that she pretended to be devastated. After everyone had left, Lindy went to Tycoon's hospital bed. She told her husband, who was a vegetable and couldn't speak, that no one could kick her out of the mansion. Tycoon was furious, but there was nothing he could do. Rayon then told her husband to go back to the office, and she stayed behind to take care of her father-in-law. Lindy, however, immediately went home to Anna and told her that Rayon was alone in the hospital, and that it would be a good opportunity for them to eliminate her. Anna realized what Lindy meant. She then contacted a gangster, and said she would pay him a lot of money if he could make Rayon disappear. And Rayon was still in the hospital, taking care of her father-in-law. At night, when he was asleep, she went outside to get some fresh air. Soon after, Whitebeard, posing as a doctor, told her that Tycoon's condition had suddenly worsened and that he needed to be transferred to a hospital. So he urged Rayon to get into the ambulance and pushed her inside. Rayon realized something was wrong, but it was too late. She was then kidnapped by the gangsters and taken to an abandoned warehouse. Whitebeard is the boss of the gangsters, worried about the possibility of a long night. Lindy urged Whitebeard to kill her daughter-in-law. Whitebeard agreed, but he had his own agenda. Lindy didn't realize that this time she was shooting herself in the foot. When the gangster comes to deliver Rayhan's food, he accidentally leaves his cell phone in the warehouse. Rayhan picks up the phone and asks Amir for help, but no sooner had she spoken than the gangsters found out. The gangster warns Amir not to call the police, or he'll be forced to find his wife's corpse. Worried about alerting the police, Amir found the warehouse alone, based on Rayhan's location information. Strangely, the warehouse was unattended. Amir didn't care. He got a crowbar and pried open the door. Then he hugged Rayhan and told her not to be afraid. He was ready to take Rayhan with him out of the abandoned warehouse. 
but before they could get out of the warehouse, a gun was put to their heads. So it was all Whitebeard's plan. He lured Amir here on purpose to ask for more ransom. Now Amir and Rayhan are both tied up by him. Lindy only found out that her son had been kidnapped when she got a call from Whitebeard. Unapanicked, Lindy warned him to release Amir immediately, or he wouldn't get any of his money. But Amir's life was in Whitebeard's hands, so he wasn't afraid of any threats from Lindy. He told Lindy to double the ransom right away, or she'd have to pay for her son and daughter in law's deaths. Lindy then realized what an evil and sinful man Whitebeard was. For the sake of her son's safety, Lindy and Anna could only hand over the double ransom to Whitebeard. Whitebeard said that he would not take the money for nothing and promised that he would make Rayhan disappear from the world quietly without anyone noticing. Lindy and Anna both have bitchy smiles on their faces. While Amir is being kidnapped, he finds a bottle of wine on a shelf. He kicks the bottle to the ground and kicks the pieces of the bottle into Rayhan's hand. Although Rayhan was terrified, she managed to cut the rope with the shards. They both managed to break free. The gangster was careless enough to forget to lock the door. Amir leads Rayhan outside quietly, but the gangster spots them. Amir rushes up and fights with the gangster and yells for Rayhan to go first. Rayhan knew that she would only be a distraction to Amir, so she had to leave first. With no worries, Amir is so powerful that he knocks out the gangster with just one punch. Then he quickly grabbed the gangster's gun. With the gun pointed at his head, he could only give in and watch Amir leave. Amir came outside and immediately threw his gun into the bushes. After Amir left, a hand suddenly picked up the gun, then there was a gunshot from the warehouse. Rayhan was so scared when she heard the gunshot that she cried and prayed for Amir's safety. The next moment, Amir suddenly appeared in front of her. The two of them survived the crisis and embraced each other. Then they drove away without stopping. The shot was fired by Whitebeard at one of his men. He did it to fake a video of Amir shooting someone. That was his real plan because he wasn't satisfied with double the ransom. The next day, he went to Lindy with a fake video of Amir shooting. This time he demanded $10 million from Lindy or he would turn the video over to the police. Lindy realizes she's been swindled by Whitebeard. She took her anger out on Anna and yelled, look at the unprofessional killer you got. Anna says she hired Whitebeard to quickly eliminate Rayhan and didn't think twice about it. She said she would get the video back this time, no matter how much money she had to spend. Lindy could only wait anxiously. Luckily, Whitebeard kept his promise and gave the video to Anna as soon as he got the money. Lindy told Anna to delete the video, but Anna said the video would be of great use to her. She plans to use the video to threaten Rayhan to leave Amir forever. While Amir was cuddling with his wife, he didn't even realize that he had been framed for murder. Anna threatened her to divorce Amir with a video of him shooting a man, or she'd give it to the police. Amir will spend the rest of his life in jail for murder. What she doesn't realize is that Rayhan and Amir have been through a lot of life and death together since they got married. They've come to trust each other completely. Rayhan believed that if Amir had shot someone, he would have told her. Besides, the fact that Anna has a video of him killing someone is suspicious. Rayhan ignored Anna's threats. In fact, the video is a fake. Anna bought it from Whitebeard for $10 million. She was too scared to give it to the police and finally broke down. She tried everything to drive Rayhan away. But in the end, she lost both Amir and her money. And her provocations and setups made Rayhan and Amir grow closer. Anna can't accept this. In desperation, she found Whitebeard and tried to get him to do more harm to Rayhan. But Whitebeard is beyond her control. Last time, Anna paid $10 million for the video he faked. That convinced Whitebeard that Anna was the one with the most money. So instead of beating around the bush, he kidnapped Anna. Anna didn't think she'd go for wool and come home shorn. Whitebeard called Lindy and demanded $50 million for Anna, but Lindy couldn't possibly pay that much to save Anna. She immediately turned Whitebeard down. Whitebeard was furious and took all his anger out on Anna, so he made Anna do his laundry. He forced Anna to wash his feet every day. He even made Anna scrub the dirty toilet. Whitebeard said to her one day, I don't want to do this, but it's a shame Lindy won't redeem you. Anna hated Lindy with a passion, although Lindy was very worried about Anna at this time. She was not worried about Anna's safety, but worried that Anna would report her for all the bad things she had done. After thinking it over, Lindy decided to save Anna. But when Lindy arrived at the place where she was ransomed, she realized that Anna had been tortured to the point of serious mental disorder. She was so mad that she wanted to eat Lindy alive. Anna vowed to tell Amir all the evil things Lindy had done when she got out. Lindy hurriedly escaped on her own. Since then, Lindy changed her mind and told Whitebeard not to let Anna out under any circumstances, and she promised to give Whitebeard more money. Whitebeard gave her his word, but then he called Amir and demanded ransom. He's not an ethical kidnapper, and it doesn't keep his word. Rayhan realizes that it was Anna who ordered Whitebeard to kidnap her. So Rayhan told Amir what Anna had done. Although Amir was furious when he found out, he still drove to the meeting place. 
This time, Emir is finally smart enough to call the police before meeting with the kidnappers. But by the time he meets Anna, Whitebeard has already escaped. Emir cursed Anna for what she deserved. He didn't think she was capable of so many dehumanizing acts. Emir won't allow anyone to hurt Rehan now. It was then that Anna realized that she had lost the battle of love from the very beginning. Anna was then taken to the police station for investigation. She went completely insane, screaming that Lindy had made her do all this. But who would believe a crazy person nowadays? In the end, Anna was sent to a mental hospital, which was her final destination, and there was a happy event in the family. Tycoon was finally released from the hospital and returned home. Although he still can't talk or move, his mental state is much better. This made Lindy panic, because she was afraid that Tycoon might be able to speak one day. When that happens, her fate will be even worse than Anna's. After all this, Emir announces that he's going to organize a new wedding for Rayon because their previous wedding ceremony was too simple. He is going to organize a grand and meaningful wedding for Rayhan this time. This time Amir will make Rayhan the happiest bride ever. Tycoon was very happy to hear this. For this wedding, Amir has prepared more than a dousing sets of expensive necklaces and jewelry for Rayhan. Rayhan felt happy and Kansi every day. The night before the wedding, Amir took her to see the night view. Rayhan exclaimed that she had never seen such a beautiful view. Amir said it was nothing, because the real beauty was yet to come. Then the sky suddenly exploded with fireworks of unparalleled splendor. That afternoon, Rayhan was trying on wedding dresses for her wedding tomorrow. Amir suddenly comes in and takes her away. Now after down scenes of life and marriage crises, they finally made it work. Now there's nothing stopping them both from being happy. Emir drove Rayhan through the streets of Istanbul, showing off wherever the crowds were. When they got home, Emir got Rayhan a professional makeup artist. The soon-to-be bride Rayhan looks gorgeous. While everyone was busy, Emir escaped with Rayhan from the wedding. He took Rayhan on a cruise ship and prepared a romantic date at sea for her. Rayhan had never felt so happy. Every moment she spent with Emir was like a dream. They made a promise to the sea that they would love each other forever until the end of time. In that evening, the wedding ceremony began when the priest asked them if they wanted to be married. This time they both said yes without hesitation. The priest solemnly pronounced them husband and wife. After the ceremony, the guests began to make noise. After the wedding, the newlyweds chose to spend their wedding night on a cruise ship instead of going home. The next day, Amir woke Rayhan up with a bouquet of flowers. Rayhan smiled and woke up from her dream. She looks at Amir with so much love in her eyes. Amir takes the opportunity to ask her for a sweet kiss. Once ashore, as soon as he met anyone, Amir said, This beautiful lady is my wife. The way he loves his wife now, it's hard for me to remember how much he hated her in the beginning. After they got married, Rayhan told Amir, that she wanted to go to college and study architecture because it was her dream to design houses. Amir was very supportive of Rayhan's dream, but he also warned Rayhan that going to college would take a lot of effort and he didn't want to overwork her. Rayhan says that these difficulties are nothing. Despite Amir's reluctance, he helped Rayhan with the enrollment process the next day. He even drove Rayhan to school the next day. Amir is now a completely spoiled wife maniac. In the afternoon, when Rayhan was not yet dismissed from school, Amir came to the school gate early and waited for her. But he waited for a long time and did not see her come out, which made Amir a bit anxious. When Rayhan came out of the school building in an hour, Amir saw her with a male teacher. The way they were talking and laughing made Amir jealous. When she got home, Rayhan kept talking about how knowledgeable and interesting the teacher was. She and many of her classmates loved the teacher's classes. Amir felt uncomfortable when he heard this from his wife. At night, Amir lay on his bed and couldn't sleep. His mind was filled with the male teacher talking to Rayhan. Amir was very upset and thought to himself, what's the big deal if he can only teach? Although he was jealous of seeing his wife talking to another man, Amir took Rayhan to and from school as usual the next day. The day Rayhan said that the male teacher had come to her house, because it was her first time in college. The teacher came to her house to help her with her homework so that she wouldn't fall too far behind in her studies. As soon as Amir heard that the teacher had come to her house, he immediately said that he had to thank him. As soon as the two men met, Amir immediately assumed the attitude of a host and said politely, I'm so sorry to see you come to my home to tour my wife. And on behalf of my wife, I'd like to thank you. My wife is lucky to have a teacher like you. Oh my god. He mentioned his wife three times in three sentences, as if he was afraid that the teacher didn't know about Rayhan's relationship with him. It was a bit embarrassing for the male teacher. Rayhan felt that it was not very polite to do so. In the evening, 
She told Amir that she didn't want him to drive her to school every day because she didn't want her classmates to know that she was married. Rehan was afraid that her classmates would look at her differently. Despite Amir's reluctance to implement his wife's plan, the next day he complied and arranged for a driver to take Rehan to school. Upon arrival in the class, the students were very excited today as they were told that there would be a new male teacher who was very handsome. They were all very excited to see what the new teacher would look like. Rayhan, on the other hand, didn't care about the gossip and thought, can it be more handsome than my husband? But when the male teacher arrived in the classroom, Rayhan's eyes widened at the big surprise. This woman has just enrolled in college, only to find out that her husband is her teacher. Her classmates all exclaimed that this teacher is really so handsome that even her deskmate said that he is her type. Rayhan was shocked with an inexplicable twinge of jealousy. When she looked at Amir's hand again, she realized that he had taken off his wedding ring. Rayhan was furious. But she couldn't get mad in front of her classmates, so she had to hold her temper. She wanted to see what this man who was flirting with her yesterday wanted to do. After the bell rang, Amir introduced himself and said, I'm your new substitute teacher, I'll be teaching your architecture class from now on, so if you have any questions, you can ask me. Her deskmate Lily immediately asked Amir if he was single, and Amir smiled and replied of course. When Rayhan heard that, she couldn't sit still, she took out her cell phone and sent Amir a message asking what he wanted. Amir specifically named Rayhan and said, This pretty girl, you can't play with your cell phone in class. Rayhan's anger level instantly reached a critical point, and she kept thinking about how she would deal with him when she got home. On the contrary, Amir thought that his wife was too cute. He asked the students to bring in their homework for him to correct. The female students all immediately scrambled to speak up and ask Amir to correct their homework, especially your deskmate, Lily, who was the most enthusiastic. Rayhan could only hold back her anger, as we all knew that this class was too unbearable for her. Immediately after class, Rayhan goes to Amir's office. However, before Rayhan could say anything, Amir immediately put on his teacher's demeanor and asked, What can I do for you, my dear student? When Rayhan heard this, she immediately exploded in anger. Seeing that his wife was really angry, Amir explained that he had a PhD in architecture and was more than qualified to be their substitute teacher. Rayhan then asked Amir why he was a teacher at her school. Amir teasingly said that he was doing it because he missed her so much, and by becoming her teacher he would have time to see her more often. Her husband's reason made Rayhan's anger disappear, and she was left with only shyness. The bearded man is so good at entertaining women. But then Rayhan saw without realizing it that Amir had nothing on his finger. So she asked him why he wasn't wearing a wedding ring. Amir immediately said, I took off the ring at your behest. You said you didn't want your classmates to know about our relationship. This left Rayhan speechless as it was indeed a request. But she was still pissed off as she was walking out of the office. She also warned Amir to watch out and especially stay away from her female classmates. Amir was only amused by his wife's reaction. After returning home, Amir told Rayhan, You are the only girl I will ever see. You are the most beautiful in my eyes. Rayhan feels shy to see her husband doing this. Amir takes the opportunity to ask her for a sweet kiss. However, Rayhan suddenly said that she had to go and do her homework so that she could bring it to him for correction tomorrow. Then she gets up and leaves, leaving Amir sitting on the bed, wondering what to do. Amir then smiled and asked her if she was jealous. He assured Rayhan that in school, I was just a teacher and the girls were just my students. I would never have wild desires for them. But Amir didn't know that a girl was already interested in him none other than Rayhan's deskmate Lily. The next day, Lily came to Amir's house and said she didn't understand some of her homework. So she wanted Amir to help her with it. How could Amir not understand what the little girl was thinking? He immediately said he had something to do later. So if she wasn't in a hurry, he could answer her questions during class. The scene of them standing face to face was seen by Rayhan. Not knowing exactly what they were talking about, she felt curious and jealous. She wanted to go over there and ask them what they were talking about and why they were so close to each other. But she was worried about exposing her relationship with Amir. At night, Amir lay beside her as if nothing had happened. Rayhan just laid her head on the pillow and didn't want to talk to Amir. Amir smiled even more when he saw his wife's reaction. He knew Rayhan was jealous, but he purposely didn't say anything. He just liked to see Rayhan care about him. This man is really too bad. What Rayhan didn't expect was that the next day, Amir did something that shocked the whole college. Amir walked into the classroom holding Rayhan's hand tightly. All the students jaws dropped in surprise. They all marveled at how fast Rayhan seduced a man. They never thought that the new male teacher would have a girlfriend so soon. But what Amir said next left them tongue-tied. In front of all the students, he announced that the beautiful lady beside me is my wife. We are already married and we love each other very much. With this statement, all the female students were completely cut off from Amir's interest. Rayhan was very satisfied and happy. But there was one woman who wouldn't give up on Amir. 
no matter what the cost. She was Anna, who had always loved Amir, although she has been in a mental hospital for a long time. She can't let go of her obsession to get Amir. One day, Anna escaped from the mental hospital. She dodged the police all the way to Amir's house. But what she saw outside the door made her furious. Anna's love grew into hate and she vowed to make them both pay. He expressed his love for his wife without realizing that his actions had angered Anna. Anna hated that woman for stealing Amir from her, and she hated Amir for ignoring her. Anna vowed to make them both pay. Then she went straight to Amir's sister. Layla is shocked to see Anna because she remembers that she's supposed to be in a psychiatric hospital. Anna tells her to shut up and immediately steps on the gas to leave. Layla's boyfriend stands in front of the car to stop her, but Anna doesn't hesitate to drive over her. At that moment, Anna was like a demon. Then she took Layla to the middle of nowhere. With her legs paralyzed, Layla was unable to fight back, so she let Anna drag her into an abandoned house. She couldn't understand why Anna had become the mad woman she was. Anna goes insane and yells, I am what I am because of you and your family. I will make you feel what it is like to lose your loved ones. On the other hand, Amir and Rayhan heard the news and went to the hospital. Layla's boyfriend tells them that Anna is the one who kidnapped Layla. This makes Amir very worried. He really doesn't know what that crazy woman will do. That's when Amir got a call from Anna. She said, if you want to save your sister, you have to give me your wife in exchange. I only give you one day to think about it. After that, she hung up. Anna wanted to know what Amir would choose between saving his wife or his sister. One side is his relative. The other side is his lover. No matter who it is, Amir can't give up. Rayon wanted to trade herself for the return of Layla. She thinks that Layla is paralyzed and can't defend herself. While she can't still fight with Anna, Amir, of course, won't agree to her demands, no matter what she says. Just then Anna calls again and warns Amir that he doesn't have much time to think about it. She said angrily, you have to make a choice. And remember, you have to let your wife come alone and not call the police, or you'll never see your sister again. Amir hangs up the phone and prepares to go alone to get his sister back. Rayhan was worried about Layla's safety and insisted on going with him to Anna. She wouldn't allow Amir to refuse her this time, so Amir had to take Rayhan with him to save his sister. As soon as they arrive at the abandoned house, the sound of Layla's crying comes from one of the rooms. They rush towards the room where Layla's voice was, but Layla's cries were coming from a tape recorder. Meanwhile, Layla was tied up with a rope and locked in another room. Amir realized that he had been tricked. Shortly after, Anna came in, and the first thing she did when she saw them was to lock the door and throw the only key out of the room through the crack. Anna lit the lighter and spilled gasoline all over the room. Anna knew that Amir wouldn't give up his wife, and she did it to force both of them to die here. Amir quickly advised her to calm down, but after doing so many evil things, how could Anna still have any sense? Since she can't get the man she likes, she will let him and his wife stay here with her forever. As if she was crazy, Anna lit up the gasoline without any hesitation, although Amir immediately rushed forward and knocked Anna out. The fire had already spread rapidly. Layla, who was locked in the other room, finally broke free. She dragged her paralyzed legs up the stairs with great difficulty. The pain was so intense that she cried out, but she couldn't give up and keep moving up the stairs because she was the only one who could save her brother and sister and all. At this time, although Amir, who was locked upstairs, had fought to put out the fire, the smoke had already spread throughout the room, and the oxygen in the room was about to be depleted. If they can escape, they will suffocate to death. He could only put his hopes on Layla to get them out. Layla realized that her brother and sister-in-law would be choked to death by the smoke if she continued to climb up the stairs so slowly, which made her finally burst her full potential. With her hands on the fence, she slowly stood up against the pain not being able to rejoice in the feeling in her paralyzed legs. Layla continued to walk up the stairs with great difficulty. Without a handrail, she crawled on the floor. Finally, after 10 minutes, Layla reached the door of her brother's room. Layla slipped the key from the floor through the gap and Amir and Rayhan were able to escape. Amir is instantly overjoyed to find his paralyzed sister on her feet. At this moment, he has no more fear and nervousness that his life is on the line, but only feels happy and proud for Layla. Eventually, Anna was sent back to the mental hospital, where she would be under even harsher supervision. See an Amir returning home with Layla. The driver rushed to push Layla's wheelchair to the side of the car. Amir grabbed the wheelchair and pushed it aside. The whole family wondered why Amir did this, but then everyone's mouths dropped open in surprise. Layla got out of the car on her crutches without any assistance. The whole family was happy for Layla. They didn't expect Layla's legs to be paralyzed for so many years. But today, they are actually recovered although she still needs crutches for support. It means that she's not far away from a full recovery. Although Tycoon can't move or speak, we can see how happy he is by the look on his face. Layla hugged her father tightly, but now Tycoon can't move his fingers, so it's only a matter of time. 
before Tycoon is mobile again. Amir was thrilled to see this. He was so excited and thankful. Rayhan tenderly wiped the tears from his eyes. The next day, Rayhan gave Amir even more exciting news. He was going to be a father. At first, he was at a loss for words when he heard the news. Looking at such a beautiful and sweet wife, he was moved to tears just embracing her in his arms. He understood how much his wife had brought changes and surprises to his life. Since Rayhan got pregnant, Amir doesn't let her cook anymore no matter how busy she is. Whenever he eats, he always gives Rayhan food and tells her to eat more to get more nutrients. This made Lindy jealous. After all, ever since her daughter-in-law got pregnant, Amir had always listened to his wife and ignored his mother. Lindy was worried that once the baby was born, she would have even no authority in the family. She once went crazy and beat her husband into a vegetative state to gain power in the family, but now she won't allow an outsider to threaten her hard-earned position. To destroy Rayhan, she bought the poison from a witch at any cost. The witch said that if her pregnant daughter-in-law took one drop of the poison, the baby in her womb would disappear, and no one would ever find out about the conspiracy. The ruthless Lindy wants to show her daughter-in-law, who's in charge of the family. In the morning, Lindy put the poison in Rayon's cup when the restaurant was empty. When Rayon came over for breakfast, the maid poured tea for her as usual, but didn't notice the poison in her cup. Unaware of this, Rayon picked up the cup and was ready to drink the tea. Lindy stares at Rayon with a tense expression. Just as Rayon was about to drink the tea, Amir suddenly stopped her. He said that in order to make sure that Rayon's drink is at the right temperature, he has to try everything that is given to Rayon in the future. Rayon blames him for making too much of a fuss. Little did she know that it was Amir's fussing that saved their baby. Then Amir was about to take her cup and drink the tea. Lindy panicked when she saw this. She grabbed the cup and said that the tea was too hot and that she would wait for a while before drinking it. And then she spilled the tea on purpose. Amir was surprised but didn't give it a second thought. Lindy was very angry but she realized that she had no chance to poison Rayon if Amir was watching her all the time. Lindy also realized that it would be difficult for her to do this alone. She had to find a helper. And Anna, who also resented Rayhan, was definitely her best choice. Lindy told her that Rayhan was pregnant with Amir's child. If you don't want to lose to Rayhan, I can help you get out of this mental hospital, and then we can deal with Rayhan together. But Anna suddenly laughed out loud when she heard what she said. She didn't care about Rayhan at the moment, because she only remembered that Lindy didn't want to pay for her to be ransomed from the robbers. Anna was so angry that she pushed Lindy onto the bed and immediately put the cabinet down to block the door. Lindy realized she was in trouble, but it was too late. Then Anna began to beat her. She tried numerous times to escape, but she couldn't move the cabinet. Anna saw her struggling, so she pinned her to the floor and choked her as hard as she could. Lindy soon stopped moving altogether. Anna screamed at her for bringing this on herself. I guess Lindy never thought she'd be killed by Anna. Anna was arrested for intentional homicide, and it looks like she'll be spending the rest of her life in jail. It wasn't long before Tycoon was back on his feet. He wasn't surprised when he found out about his wife's death. He just thought Lindy got what she deserved. Leila lost her crutches and her paralyzed legs have fully recovered. As each day passes, Rayhan's belly grows bigger and bigger. Amir's sympathy for the pregnant Rayhan was so great that he used to give her shoulder massages. He also made a wooden toy for the baby and even bought the baby a bicycle early in the day. They were so excited about the arrival of their little one. Ten months later, their baby was born. Hey boy. This boy is the fruit of their love and will make a difference in their lives. Amir and Rayhan are a couple who have had many fights since they met. There were misunderstandings and moments of life and death together. After all the trials and tribulations, they still choose to hold each other's hands tightly and finally have a peaceful and happy life. It is worth mentioning that the male protagonist and the female protagonist got together because of this drama. And their love went from the drama to the reality. No matter in the drama or outside the show, they are a couple in love. This is the end of the recap of the TV series called Yemen. Let's explore the wonderful movies together. You can subscribe to Maroon Recap and leave comments.